Joel, how are you? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Oh, man, my treat. Yeah. <laughs> Did it take you long to get here? Uh, I was just about an hour or something. Yeah. Oh, Nothing yeah. an album can't fix, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You listen to something on the way. What'd you listen to? Uh, well, I finally got the new Lorna Shaw pre order. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I'm a sucker for, like, if I pre order an album, I don't listen to it till I finally get it. Yeah, okay. And, you know, being in Perth, ordering something from overseas, it's like, it's not going to get there when it's meant to. Yeah, yeah. So I've been holding off and I've finally been able to give that a spin. It's uh, pretty good. It's, it's good. It's good. Is it more of the same kind of stuff, that cinematic kind of. Yeah black metal kind of thing they're doing yeah that's yeah. it but um i don't know there's just so much good albums coming out this year it's ridiculous mm. what what else do you been listening to then um carrie and vale they've like never even heard of them oh, that's it man there's just so many bands out <laughs> yeah. there it's fucking yeah, there nuts is. yeah they dropped an album and it's absolutely fire it's like why is no one talking about this what it's kind like, of music is that um like melodic tech deathy sort of stuff yeah okay but um yeah, they're just like, you know, wizards of their craft. And um, I feel like that album needs more loving. So is that is that predominantly what you're into, kind of tech death stuff? Is that your... Uh, yeah, that and pretty much like all, most, pretty much all styles of metal, to be yeah. honest, really. Like, like if I can bob my head to it, man, and it's got some cool shit going on, yeah. Yeah, I'll listen. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> good, man. It's a good yeah. way to be, hey. Uh, yeah. Box yourself in, and then, uh, yeah, no, and when cool. you're working on any projects, you're always going to have interesting inspirations to draw from. I mean. Yeah, that's it, man. It's you know, if you're listening to one sort of thing, it's your influence and things will be a bit stank, stagnant. And, yeah, you know. So yeah. try to keep that open. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, um, so with with your your current band, Paradise and Exile, did, yeah. how did that all come about then? That was a real interesting one, actually. Like, um, so it was pretty much a year ago now, maybe just over a year, because um, I used to knock around with the Paradise Boys, like, way back in its inception. Like, I played bass for their first show and stuff. Oh, do you play an instrument as well? Yeah. Oh, well. Bass is me trade. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I thought I'd give vocals a shot, you yeah. know, and um, they're... I think they were looking to get like for a, a vocalist changeover sort of thing. Yeah. And um yeah, I just like woke up one morning with like a bunch of messages from you know, a couple of mates and Lewis being like, Hey man, like Paradise and Exile, like looking for some dude like some new vocalist and So oh, so they were already a band and been playing gigs and that before you come on vocals yeah the, who, who i'm the vocals, third vocalist oh right yeah so oh. they've had that um dude called dustin who did like their first ep dude called damien yeah. real nice dude he did their big ep the liberation mm-hmm. he's got some good pipes on him yeah okay and same um, kind of vocal style yeah like a little bit different but the same like sort of thing like you know we both go Go low and high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, That's um, cool. yeah, and I got a message from Lewis and a video call from him and Trav that evening mm. being like, hey, man, like, um, Grant and Brent sent over some, like, songs that you've recorded and, like, it's, like, your vocals, do you want to... We've got studio time booked. Uh, this was on, like, Thursdays. Like, we got studio booked on a Saturday do you want to come down and sing on this song? I was like, oh, yeah, sick. Like, All right, here's a song. Write some lyrics to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> I usually spend a fair bit of time writing lyrics. If I was like, I had to punch this one out. Yeah. Well, so so how do you, what do you do for writing lyrics? Like what's your, um, what's, your mm, what's your process for that? Um, I, like, I like writing short stories, end of the yeah, day yeah. sort of thing. So I kind of like little think a little like, events which i can sort of say in a story to try to tie it all in yeah but um so it's all fi- fictional kind of stuff it's not yeah. like you're not like writing about all oh, like new world order yeah <laughs> <Or> <laughs> something like that or no i try to keep it in a little bit in the fantasy realm if yeah. anything you know like yeah monsters and beasts and yeah that's cool. just you know a bit of imagination where'd you get that from is that something you grew up and you're into like 
were you into like say Lord of the Rings and stuff like that or is love. it from that kind of thing like, yeah I love me Lord of the Rings yeah, okay. thing, so is that kind of where that comes from the ideas about your stories and that from I'd say things so. you probably saw when you were growing up and yeah that's it I guess yeah and like you know video games too man yeah. it's like you see some of these like awesome like illustrated and like cool looking monsters and you're like yeah is yeah. that like that Warhammer stuff has a lot of that hey? yeah dude yeah. Yeah. I've, n- I've never known much about that but um, my Tato's son was um, I think he used to paint them or something like that or I remember yeah. seeing some stuff he had and he was right into it and I, they had some awesome designs I just remember seeing some yeah. of the stuff at the house and I was like fuck oh, that stuff looks pretty cool yeah well that's it it all, all looks badass and I was like fuck yeah I'll give this a crack like yeah. years and years ago and I got one set and I absolutely butchered it and I was like can't paint for shit so oh, I was just sort of just so I was, do they all you paint them is that, is that the thing about Warhammer you collect them and then paint them yourself or do you buy, can you buy and paint it as well or um like I'm not like huge in the world of war, war, um, Warcraft or whatever like and um, Warhammer, sorry. But, um, is that related, Warcraft and Warhammer? Are they don't the think same so. thing? No. Nah. But, um, yeah, it's like, I think you can buy some pre-painted, but yeah, okay. the, the main deal is to you build it yourself, glue all the little bits, and then you paint it all. And yeah, righto. That's it, a little bit of arts and crafts. But yeah. yeah. I'd just rather look at the the sick images yeah, of it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, the final product. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I tried and I was like, no, nah, this is, yeah. I haven't got the hands for this. Yeah, I've tried stuff like that before when I was a kid and I used to, um, it's pretty lame, but I used to collect model rockets. Sick, dude. <laughs> I was like going to be an astronaut <laughs> in my head anyway. Yeah, we all got dreams, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would, um, tried painting like that Apollo capsule thing and it was really expensive and I fucked it up <laughs> and... I'm still like beat myself up over yeah. it. I was like, man, because my stepdad gave me money and we didn't have a whole lot of money. And I went and bought that thing and then I fucked it. <laughs> and they were, they were like really, really supportive of me and, and all yeah. that. But I'm like, fuck, so I squandered your fucking money. And I feel bad, you know. <laughs> yeah. And you're still holding on to it, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. But, um, but yeah, um, and if you, speaking of like cool characters, have you ever um, played Dark Souls? I I have a bit yeah I've Man. only recently just like gotten into Elden Ring. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, same kind of yeah same, same developer. Same dudes yeah. Yeah, but their imagination for yeah. some of their characters, I'm like fucking hell, man. This is some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, so you well, see like, those big trolls walking with like the big nail through them and yeah, the chains. It's like, yeah. That's fucking metal as hell. <laughs> yeah, and even even like the Demon Souls and Dark Souls games. Um, just to remember one of them I bought I think it was Dark Souls and I got like you know where you get the collector's edition or whatever it is and you get the tin case and it's got oh, like yeah. an art book and I had the art book and I was like man these would make the killerest tattoos they're yeah. so fucking cool um, all about that <laughs> yeah they're so like grotesque and, and even like um, I'm just like I don't know how they come up with these designs some of them are so unique yeah so unique and um, and I remember there's um, one of the main like bosses on the game, I can't remember his name now, but is this massive? I think it was a massive like dude, and he had like a gown made up of skeletons that were like kind of ghosts, but all the skulls all through it. I don't know. It was just like Sick. fuck, it's so cool. And and then all the boss encounters on them games are so memorable. Yeah. Um, and because they're all so unique, and I, and I'm just like, I can't believe how creative these people are to have so many unique bosses. Because if you play say like Skyrim, yeah. It's like a, it's so much rinse and repeat of like yeah. they're just like a higher level version and maybe a different colour of like a lower <laughs> enemy. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. this, they've, there's so Full much variety. Full reinvented each dude. Like, yeah, yeah, there's like 30 fucking bosses or probably more on them games, on each game, because they're always mini bosses than the big ones and they're all different. And Yeah. and um, and Just to keep just, it fresh is impressive. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't know how they don't... There's no recycled shit here. It's yeah. all so unique. And then every new game they come out with, it's just, you know, and then they have Bloodborne. Did you ever? I don't think I've played the Bloodborne. I remember hearing about oh, it. Oh, man, that's awesome. It's, all, it's like gothic kind of. Um, got, yeah, gothic mixed with like London back in the, you know, when London used to be foggy in the Jack the Ripper. Yeah, right, yeah. And, yeah. Spooky. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and just really crazy spun out. Yeah, enemy and level designs and um, and um, are you, do you still play many video games? Uh, I have like you know um, like bursts of it, I guess you'd say. I'll be like 
three months where I'll just be like hooked. Yeah. And then it'll be like, oh, I'll put it down for, for a little bit. Him. And then all right, I'll have another, another burn at it. Yeah. You know, so it's because, especially when you're getting into like, you know, a game that's consuming you. Yeah. You, know, you kind of put things on the back burner, which that you ha- shouldn't. That's rare these days though. Hey, like um, the last game that I got really glued to and, and was like, this is my life. Really pissing my wife off with because <laughs> yeah. I was stuck to it. Yeah. It was probably Elden Ring um, because that because that game, as soon as you put it down for a while, you get shit at it. you got to kind of keep playing it yeah. to keep up the, your chops. Yeah, that's you know it. I mean? Yeah, you get rusty. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, eh? Yeah. It's almost like you develop a skill set playing yeah. it. You know, a lot of dodging and, yeah. and then yeah. you're doing your magic and then your melee and your... Yeah, and seeing how the dudes move and you memorise the maps of yeah. how they do it. Oh, yeah, right. that's right. And... Um, and yeah, you memorize their patterns of the enemies, and and um, and yeah, that's that's one game. Yeah, you keep your chops up, and that and Call of Duty. I'd, I'd jump back on that because we were away for two weeks, and then I've just come back and I was playing the new Modern Warfare. Oh yeah, yesterday, and um, and fuck, I sucked because before <laughs> I left, I was top of the leaderboards heaps of times, and I was like, fuck it, oh, I'm never this good at COD, and yeah, I was doing really well. It. And then I come back. And I don't know, mate. I'm really tired as well from because we had like the red eye flight from Singapore, and I'm having not really slept. Right, yeah. And um, and I was just fucking sucking at it. But and because <laughs> I, you know, you just keep get to keep playing it because you think of all the people you're playing against. They're like twelve year olds in their mum's basement. Yeah, just like just, yeah, and dialed in. Yeah, and they're all fucking just playing twenty four seven, drinking Monster Energies, and <laughs> yeah, that's it. Committed <laughs> to the cause. Yeah. Yeah. But um, this other, I got this game the other day, um, the Callisto Protocol. Have you heard of that? No. Oh, okay. Did you ever play um, uh, Dead Space? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's made by the same people. Oh, what's well, that? Yeah, my mate Grant was mentioning this the other yeah. day. I was like, that sounds cool. Yeah, and some. It's the best graphics I've ever seen. That that's fucking amazing to look at. But it, I ended up taking it back because it was just so repetitive. Oh, right. It's like um. Because, you know, Dead Space had that kind of dismemberment kind of thing. Like, yeah. the enemies, you'd shoot their legs off, then they'd, like, crawl towards you on their hands. Yeah. And that kind of thing. Or you shoot their arms off, and then they try to bite you or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that was really terrifying because, like, fuck, the gun won't stop. Yeah, you know, that's you, it. you got to, like, keep coming you gotta, like cut them down piece by piece yeah. like a tree. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> and, um, and it was so cool. Whereas this, um, when I started playing it, the, the intro is really cool. And I was, like, for the first couple of hours, I was like, this game is fucking awesome. I'm going to be hooked on this. Yeah. And then I just noticed that there's so many lame jump scares. It's like whatever magic they had when they made Dead Space, they've just used it all for that Dead yeah, Space right. game. And then now it's just like poorly borrowing from it. and um, Scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. And then like for the the first bit, the first jump scare is a steam, a steam pipe bursting. And I'm like, fuck that. Is, I just roll my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that's so cliche. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. hell. <laughs> Come on, surely you could have thought of something better than that. And yeah. Then, and then there's guys jumping out of a vent and then yeah. And then a body on the ground, you walk up and then it animates. And I'm like, oh, come on, fuck. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's just, I just, and there's like only a couple enemy types and then heaps of it's melee stuff. So you start with like this, um, like a shiv thing, then like a baton and then the guns play a bit of a role I think later in the game but when you first play for the first few hours you don't really have a, a gun you're just using it's all melee stuff yeah. but the dodge is retarded because the camera's right up on his back so he covers a fair bit of the screen yeah. and then if there's an enemy in front of you just hold like the left stick or right st- uh, sorry the left stick like you hold it left or right just to dodge and then you dodge around and you look for a window to hit him mm. but if there's another enemy on screen um they there's you can't turn around quick because yeah, right. it's real because the game's all like dead space where you're like this slow like hulking kind of guy yeah and um and it's just fucking so frustrating yeah and then i was looking up that. online i was like i wonder if other people are, and then i looked up his reviews and it's getting like review bomb people like what the fuck oh, no. man <laughs> this game was hyped up and yeah. and the graphics are definitely the best i've ever seen they look so good and i was like Fuck, I just want to play it just because it looks so good. But yeah. I was just after a while, I was like, this is just boring. It's hallway after hallway. You go through, squeeze through like a duct, go to the next bit, open a door, enemy jumps out, do the thing, bit rinse, rinse, repeat. repeat. It's yeah. the same. And there's no exploration. It's just literally corridor, corridor, corridor. Yeah. And um, and I was just like, uh, nah, I'm not going to sink any more time into yeah. this. So I'll just go back to playing fucking Call of Duty <laughs> now. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, so what have what you been playing mm. anyway? Uh, just yeah, 
Elden Ring and yeah. um, the Far Cry Primitive or Primal. Oh, sorry. Primal, yeah, that, yeah. That's where you're like a hunter gatherer kind of thing. Yeah, full caveman <laughs> yeah. going around with like a rock. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's sick. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm all I never played that. it. And like, if you want to get consumed by another game, yeah, <laughs> like get around it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was, I think it's um was free on the PlayStation Store for a while. It's, it's a couple of years old now. It's been out yeah. for a minute, so yeah, but it's good fun. Have you, you know, finished Elden Ring yet? Nah. <laughs> nah, right. I only just recently picked it up. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, kind of like yeah, you put it off for a while. You're going to be on it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't so. believe that that main map, there's like a map underground of nearly the whole fucking size as well. Yeah, it's just caves everywhere, man. Yeah, well then, you, I, don't, I don't know how far you're in. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but <laughs> um, you do get to a point where then you explore like it's like another world underneath that world. Sick. And it's fucking huge. And I was like, what? <laughs> fucking hell. I thought I was nearly finished with the game. Yeah, the top map's big enough as it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what kind of character are you on it? Prisoner. Prisoner. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Just is that where you got the, like, the loincloth and that's about and it? The, what's the name? It's like an oh. old diving helmet almost. Yeah, on the top, okay. just fully enclosed. Yeah. And what kind of, um, like, is it like a you like sword and shield kind of thing or are you doing magic or...? Uh, well, that's the good thing about the prisoner when you're like, you know, starting off, you're just like a bit of both sort of mm. thing. So you're not all oh, around. Yeah, yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah. So I've just been rolling around with an axe lately. Yeah. Just chopping shit up. And, um, you know, magic saves me a bit there, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a bit of both really, man. Like, mm. you know, like guns, like in games is one thing, but it's like, you know, having melee attacks is another. It's yeah. Like I'm all about that. I love, um. The, the melee on, on all them from soft games. So they're just, it's done yeah. so well. No yeah. other game can seem to do emulate it. it. Emulate it. Even though, even though it's kind of clunky in a way, but they yeah. somehow it works for the game. It's, yeah, it still all moves, man. Somehow, yeah, even though it's kind of a bit clunky, but it's, they've just nailed it yeah. so well. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck, I want to go back and play that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Because I hadn't played it for a few months. I got it when it came out and then I jumped back on the other week um, and and I was just, yeah, it was like I was saying before, I was and sucked out. Dusty was, again? Yeah, I was just like, fucking hell, man, trying to like <laughs> dodge and and then I was just like, I can't remember any of this shit. Yeah. But um, I ended up, the guy I, I made on it, I ended up getting this um spell called um Comet Azua or something like that and it's, and then you you do up heaps of other stuff, um, your stats and all, you get them to a certain point and this thing, it shoots like a constant like, laser beam of magic and you can cheese nearly all the bosses in the game with That's it. sick. And it's such a shit way of playing the game. I did it, <laughs> but it kind of, nothing's hard after yeah. that. Yeah, all right, takes away the beauty of what it is. Yeah, well, there was this one boss that I was trying to beat for ages and I was like nearly breaking my control out. I was fucking, I must have, I don't know how many times I tried it, probably like <laughs> at least 50 to 60 times and I just kept dying and I was just, was so frustrating and then I was like fuck it I'm just gonna go grind and grind and grind and level my dude up to like ungodly levels yeah. and I did that and then I looked on YouTube and then heaps of people at the time this was like the the meta thing or whatever like everyone oh, yeah. was doing was build the character you get this comet as a spell and just chop through and then this and then I'm not even kidding this guy that's got like two phases you just go up near him and drink this like flask that makes your magic stay up for a bit and it won't won't let it come down oh, for a yeah. while for like say 10 seconds yeah. then just blast him with that and it kind of stuns stun locks him as well yeah. and then he's just stunned then and his health is just going down I was like yeah. and I, I was killed him in like fucking five seconds and I'm like fucking hell <laughs> well about the hours that I put in before you know <laughs> yeah and I was like fucking hell man and then and then I started doing it and then I was going around doing it all the bosses and then um, no one's and then I was like kind of this game's not that hard anymore yeah but, found a little fucking hack <laughs> yeah that's right yeah. and I kind of to be honest I reckon it kind of ruined it a bit um, but it was, fu- it was fun but it kind of ruined that you know because when you finally beat him you're like oh fuck yeah finally the, the oh, magic damn. of what the game is. Yeah, because that, that's the big thing about them games is that it's it's like almost insurmountable, the challenge. You're like, I'm never going to beat this gun. Yeah. And then you do and you're like, fuck. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. You walk. <laughs> fuck. And then you walk around with your chest pushed out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm unstoppable. Yeah, fuck. I'm, I'm going to go down and fucking pub tonight and start fighting something yeah. real tough now. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to go uh, glass some cunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. But, um... Getting back to um, music, how did you um, find out you could scream? 
What, what was the uh, moment you are like, fuck, I can do this? Um, uh, a lot of it goes to my mate, uh, Harry Foreman. Uh, he used to sing in my old band, Against the Tide, back in the day. Yeah. And we lived together. And um, we, you know, would just drive around and sort of fuck around doing, like, Dahlia covers, Lamb of God covers and that. And just pretty much singing with him helped a heap. You know, just being yeah. like, oh, yeah, like... Someone who can do it and me trying to find my way kind of helped massively. Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, and living with the bro as well. So we're just like a Sunday afternoon, we're just like, oh, let's do a Dahlia cover and just record that. Yeah. You know, just taking turns and doing verses and shit. Were you coughing heaps and all that at first or? Uh, a little bit. It was a bit tough, but um, it was more like later in like, once I'd like got my sort of fries and falses sort of down, mm. It was like trying to do the, like the cattle decapitation, like yeah, oh, like, all weird, the, like all the crazy shit. stuff. Yeah, yeah. The amount of times I like was dry reaching in my car, like just yeah. driving, and I just like feel like I'm swallowing my tongue and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's fucking. Because I've I've wanted to do vocals for ages, just not as the main vocalist in our band, but just some cool backups, and then yeah. um, because our um, other guitarist Sam, he's he can do some screams um, nice. and all that. But Shannon, our, um, the lead vocalist, is definitely, you know... He's got some pipes. Yeah, he is, like, nothing against Sam, but he's, he definitely couldn't replace Shannon as far as because Shannon's, you know, got it dialed. He's, yeah. That's been his main thing. That's his jam. Whereas Sam plays guitar and then kind of does a bit of screaming here and there on the side, so it's not yeah. his, his main thing. And um, But, you know, Sam's... They, they worked well together. It's like their voices are really different, but... When we um, double them up, you know, on yeah. the, they kind of somehow mash them. It's just fuck, it's yeah. cool. Oh, um, I love a good dub, man. Like, yeah, you know, high and low together or something. It just gives yeah. that big vortex sound. Like, yeah, they somehow yeah. just, even though they're completely different. And Shannon's really loud vocalist because I know, I don't, well, I don't know much about vocal technique, but I know that a lot of screamers, there's not a whole lot of volume there, is there? You it's more technique yeah. than than than. If you're in a room with them, they're not super loud, are they? No, oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's actually bang on, really. It's yeah. like projections, like, you know, you got to have a little bit, but you yeah. don't need to be loud, man. It's like a lot of vocalists or just general doing vocals, it's, no, like, shouldn't be as, l like, louder than you just having a bit of a conversation, you know? Yeah. Like, man, it might be a little bit louder, but it, you're not yelling. Yeah, okay, that's yeah, well, sure. the Shannon's... Look, it's so fucking loud, man. Yeah. When he comes here to do demo stuff, I'm just like fucking neighbours. Yeah. Must think someone's getting murdered in here. Yeah. But um, and then I noticed when we played gigs, um, you will hear like a lot of vocalists are talking in the mic, and sometimes their talking voice is louder than their screaming vocals. Yeah. And then I'm like, wow, because Shannon's so fucking loud. <laughs> um, and his technique, I don't know if that's gonna bite him in the ass later because. I don't know if that's a good tech thing to no. do. From what I've read is that, you know, that's... Because isn't there, like, a, a bad way of doing things? You know, like Phil Anselmo did, and he blew his voice yeah. up pretty much. Or, or Ollie from um, yeah. Bring the Horizon. Yeah, there's definitely, like, things to do which will could be damaged, you know? Yeah. Like, but, um, like, back in the day, like, you know, let's just say, like, 10 years ago, there was, like... Nothing really out there apart from like the Melissa Cross yeah. Zen of Screen. Yeah, the Zen of Screen, yeah. That was pretty much what was out there. Yeah. And then like a lot of like 10 second hacky YouTube things. Yeah. But um, I've looked up so many things. Oh, yeah. There's nowadays we're lucky enough. There's like some awesome like things online like Carter mm. Vox Academy. Yeah, that guy's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I love watching his videos, man. Like, and there's that Ken Tamplin. He's good for clean singing. Yeah. All oh, right, sick. Yeah, have you heard of him? No. Oh, okay. Ken Tamplin. Yeah, he's um does a lot of um well, he's from the Skid Row era. Like he he knocked around with that Sebastian Bach and all that back yeah. in the day cuz he's he's from like LA or whatever. And um and he's not so much about screaming, he's more about like yeah, belting out yeah, you know, they were the hitting these yeah. notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but his, but isn't there like a correlation between knowing good singing technique helps your screaming as well? Is that correct? Definitely helps. Yeah. Like, you know, if it was a karaoke night, I'd, I'd be out there giving it a crack. Yeah, okay. You know, Can you do cleans or? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be pleasant. No. <laughs> you know, but I'd be having fun doing it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, that's cool. Like, you know, it's not. 
you know, wouldn't be great, but you know, I don't. I I like to think it wouldn't be, you know, make your ears bleed. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't be able to front a band doing cleans. That's for sure. Nah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right, right. yeah. Oh, at least you found your niche, though. So. Yeah, that's it. Dirty, filthy noises. <laughs> yeah, I'd, lo- I'd love to learn how, because um, um, I've looked up heaps of YouTube stuff. And because I, my job is pretty isolated, I'm, I work alone most of the time, and I'm sitting in a cab, yeah, so right. no one can hear me. Um, <laughs> and I've like, looked up YouTube and tried some things, and I just always end up my throat ends up hoarse after, <laughs> and um, and and I'm like either I'm coughing or later on my th- it just it's it doesn't feel great. So yeah, I'm obviously right. doing it wrong, but I've looked up so many videos and, and when they're saying you're going to do, it's almost like a, a sigh, like, but with a bit of a, yeah. aggression to it. And, and, yeah. and I'm just like, I just can't fucking get it. But I think I need to do some actual lessons one-on-one with someone because there's something I'm missing somehow. The sigh is a good way for like warming everything up, I find. Yeah, okay. But like, I'd say if anything, it's more of like a, yeah, when you know when you're gonna vomit, yeah, and you got that like uh, uh, yeah. sort of thing. It's like that's I find that action is where majority of my vocals come from. Yeah, okay. Is that because is that like the diaphragm thing they say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also up here as well. Like it sort of opens it all up a bit more because yeah, you can kind of feel it like opening and closing. And it's like mm. all right, that's where the money is. Yeah, find right. it in your pocket, I guess. So. So when how how old were you when you started doing vocals? Uh, I don't know, like maybe twenty five or something. Yeah. Okay. How, how old are you now? Thirty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're only about five years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've always played bass in other bands, so yeah. I was like, I'll try something different. And so when so have you always kind of wanted to do vocals? So when you when you were listening to music when you were a teenager or a kid, were you? Always kind of like, fuck, oh, I want to, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess to a certain extent for sure, like, you know. And so you're always kind of screaming along to stuff, were you? And yeah, trying, that's yeah. for sure, like, you know. Um, Do you find it hard to learn or was it kind of, because, you know, sometimes people figure things out, accidentally you stumble upon, oh, yeah. you some because, you know, some people can just scream. Yeah. Because they've Lucky just bastards. somehow figured it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. were you like that as well, that... Nah. No, so you were kind of coughing your ass up. And, yeah, that's yeah. it, man. I had a lot of those horse mornings and shit yeah. like that, you know. And yeah, I remember um, when I was like first like learning. I was living with a mate and his old lady, and I was working at a bottle shop. Was coming home at night, and I was singing along with. I think it was like the last All Shall Perish album, and um, yeah, I was still learning. So I was like projecting way more than I needed to. Yeah, okay. And his mum in the morning like was just like. Was he, were you like screaming in the driveway when you pulled in? I sat the blood curdling. <laughs> I was just like, oh no, it was, wasn't me. <laughs> like, no, and damn well it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just like driving along, singing away. And it's like, yeah, did a lot of damage probably at the start, that's yeah, for sure. Damn. But um, yeah, right. once you kind of get the, find your pocket and um, find new tips, like new little tricks, yeah, they sort of come a bit more naturally because you already know where you're, I think there's Sitting. probably that you got to get over that main the hurdle, hey. Yeah, that's, that's like with it. any instrument, I guess. You know, that's like, it. Drummers know, with a blast beat or something. Yeah, you know? that's right. And then guitar with say triple picking or yeah. Some, or for me, I found triple picking so difficult, way more difficult than it should have been. Um, and yeah, you know, a lot of things on guitar, and then another thing is, um, you know, say um, fast scale runs like three notes per string stuff. Oh yeah, struggled with that for years. Um, but when you crack it, you're and then I finally cracked. I'm still not. Also, I have to warm up a lot for it because, but that's with any guitarist. That kind of stuff is quite hard to do clean and fast. Um, yeah. So um, to do it, it's one thing, but to do it clean is another. That's that's correct. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's a problem I've always had. I'm not the cleanest player. I'll admit that. I'm, <laughs> um, you know, I can be sloppy, and uh, I just don't practice enough. <laughs> but, uh, but I have moments. Some yeah. sometimes I'm like, whoa, fuck. Yeah. I'm impress myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. And then Anyone other see times, this? <laughs> yeah, it's usually when I'm in my bedroom by, yeah. in, in here by myself, and yeah. then and then uh, as soon as it's a gig, I just fucking suck ass. Yeah. But then you have the then some gigs, you're like, whoa, fuck. Yeah, felt good. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I I need to stop doing that. Where I, I the gigs, I worry too much about how I'm playing, and I don't. And it, I don't enjoy the show as much as I mm. should. I need to not give a fuck. Yeah, well, that sort of goes to like that um, the all ages show. You know, yeah. it's like you go up there and it's like, oh, yeah, 
it'll be all right. And you just go up there and you just have fun. Yeah. And like the kids are having fun, man. So it's yeah. like you end up, that ends up being like your favorite show. Like that, and That's so, so cool as well. Because when we played that show, I was genuinely fucking had fun, man. Yeah. I was, and it was way more fun than 95% of the shows we've played. Yeah. And I was, um, I didn't really want to play it because, excuse me, we'd done, um, one or two of them before the Myers ones and I was like well you know we've done them we're just going to focus on Other doing things. doing um you know gigs um for you know adult audiences and stuff and then yeah. and they asked us to fill in and we're like oh yeah I guess so yeah because it's a good thing to do but yeah. I was like oh, I wasn't really looking forward to it because I was like oh, I'd rather just play another gig where you know yeah but then um once we started playing I was like fuck this is just yeah, it's like oh, the kids. I don't are... have to care. And then after I was like, "Fuck, that was so much fun." I wish, I wish, all gigs were that much fun. Yeah, that's it. Because um, the one, the one you know, we played with you guys. Yeah. Um, that that was a cool gig, but um, yeah, that was it wasn't a bigger turnout though. Eh? Like, uh, like there was because there was a couple other things on that night. I think as well. Plus, Lucy's a bit out of the way. Yeah, um, yeah, the old Linnets or whatever. I mean, sorry, Linnets, not Lucy's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, it's. That's one thing as well, like having venues which are easy access to. Yeah. It's like there's there's a couple of them, but like the majority of them, it's like, oh, it's like you've got to, got to trek it out to Fremantle or like the Vision yeah. one, you know. It's like yeah, if you don't have a car, it's like a train and a bus and then you got to walk for a bit and yeah. shit like that. And then it's, it's like, late at night and there's yeah. drunk people around and you're really going to be wanting to walk. Yeah. After a show at midnight, or <laughs> yeah, when there's heaps of meth heads getting around, and yeah, looking for, out for blood. Yeah, yeah, they're holding your guitar like shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a few times when I've left amps, um, and you got all the people lining up in the alleyway there. Yeah, and it's just like oh, I don't want to walk past these because they're just drunk, belligerent fuckwits, and they're <laughs> always, oh, and they try to like, not like bow you up to like fucking have a go at you, but yeah. they're like. Just annoying. So I just yeah. fuck off, man. I'm just, I'm just tired. I want to go home. Yeah. Just fucking fuck off. It's always interesting with those amp shows how it's like you'd have, you know, the band's playing and then towards, you know, you start to hit about like 11 o'clock or mm. something and then you get like the, the nightclub scene. Yeah, you see like chicks in. coming in in like, like yeah. short skirts it's and like, like that ain't metal. <laughs> She's not listening to metal. And yeah. then dudes coming in with like, white muscle tees and yeah <laughs> and you're like what's going on here it's like yeah. such a mesh of things you know it's like yeah we um had a show at badlands uh about a month ago or something yeah and it was like three birthdays going on it was like an eight uh, a 21st a 30th and a 40th mm. and it's like you'd rocked up here oh, was that the confession show yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, was, that was good fun yeah that was that was a cool show yeah like well, first rolled in i was like wow this is an interesting crowd yeah, <laughs> and it yeah. was like seeing all like the little um picket fence things that said like where each i think one was is. a reception for a wedding or something was it or something like that yeah, yeah it was just like what's going on it was on just here? near the bar there on the outside eh? yeah yeah it had like a little fenced off bit there yeah yeah, yeah. Like, this, this isn't a metal crowd but then you walk into the actual venue of your art here we go yeah a lot of hardcore kids here people coming out of mosh retirement for yeah, confession, yeah you know yeah no it was good it was a good turnout <laughs> yeah. um but it's cool that some of the venues um have they've got other stuff going on because you never know that someone might just be drunk as fuck from that whatever's going on outside and wander in and go yeah. what's all this and then they might check his out and yeah that's and then, it because we played um we've played convenience a heap of times but sometimes you randomly get people in there that you wouldn't expect yeah. to see you know like i've never been to convenience never played or anything but okay. we're playing it uh on the 16th yeah it's not it's not bad i don't mind it because it it fills up easy and it, yeah, and I like it, that <laughs> yeah and it's and it's kind of cool, like it, it can go off easy because oh, it's right. so small and packed in and, okay. and all that. But the only issue I have is the gear storage is like this little garden shed out the back. <laughs> and um, and it's anyone can just grab whatever they want out of there and throw it over the fence and take it. Bit too open sort of thing. Yeah. Way too open in my opinion. Um, and and then so when you're getting all your, your, your gear, you got to walk through everyone and it's just fucking annoying because people are in the way and... Yeah, and then right. you don't really want them and then you're putting away your expensive stuff and then put after you've played and put it in that shed and there's heaps of people out there that can go yeah and that's um, it yeah cashies will pay good for this <laughs> yeah yeah that's right yeah. yeah yeah so um so that's the only thing i don't like about 
that venue yeah. to be honest is, is that's that's the main thing um other than that though i don't mind it it's, yeah. it's i'm looking good. forward to it just like the little niche bit of like apparently it's like a hidden away sort of thing like yeah yeah we'll see in like a convenience little, like a 7-eleven looking thing, thing. <laughs> yeah. what's that a little bit gimmicky sort yeah. of thing like, yeah it's cool though i like it yeah, um keen for that <laughs> yeah what's your favorite venue to play in perth um i haven't played the rose mountain a hot minute but like i always used to love that i've never played that it's um like the the main one's awesome the little bar down the bottom is like it's kind of cool but the stage is like you you half your band members got to get on the floor mm, you know? so it makes it a bit more intimate but um mm. i just remember the sound at the rosie being awesome yeah and badlands was sick like just the sound on stage the best i've ever actually yeah like heard everything clearly on stage and yeah yeah you know, which is which always makes for a good experience when you're playing yeah exactly yeah, yeah. definitely yeah because you want to be able to hear yourself because i reckon you, you can just get into it better when you can hear yourself and you, yeah and you're confident in in what you're doing is sounding good because yeah. if you can't really hear it kind of takes you out of it a bit because you're like oh my and then yeah. you start worrying off how we like, yeah. sound and then and then you're not really enjoying it. When you can hear it, you're just like, fuck it. This yeah. Sick. Can, yeah, you can jam it, man. Like, yeah, you come so off at the end of the day feeling more confident, just better mm. about it. You're like, man, that was a fun show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. But yeah, we've only played there once, Badlands. Um, that was the first and only time I've played there. Mm. Love to do it again. <laughs> it's a nice size stage too, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's it. And a lot of that pit thing at the front, that's cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Just send them all in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should yeah. lock them in. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Just make it a little bit smaller, just to bring everyone in. Walls closing slowly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's um. There's a few like um, other venues where it's like I haven't played yet, but I want to play them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely do yeah. a do a uh, Perth tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, like a tour to fridge, but with venues. Yeah. 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 <laughs> have a pint at each one and yeah. have, have a play. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Could it should be it message. should be like what comedians do because don't comedians do several gigs a night? They do yeah. like fifteen minute sets. Just yeah. do like three songs, <laughs> different venues. So yeah, that's it. Start at eight pm and yeah. work come along, along everyone. Yeah, <laughs> like, just everyone following you. Yeah, that'd be a fun day. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. You should do it. Yeah, that's too much gear to carry around. Comedians only get to carry his mic and yeah. that's it. Or oh, not even probably. Yeah, just yeah, use the house it. mic. But that's <laughs> like um going from you know being bases having to load up cabs and shit mm. now vocals. It's like, oh, you don't have to do nothing, like bloody vocalist. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't be that guy, man. Like, yeah. I got to help somehow. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got, oh, I'll move your symbols for you, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's, all, it's all a team effort, I guess. Eh? Yeah, that's it. But yeah. <laughs> trying to get all the, what's the, name, the benefits of not loading and moving shit. Mm. It's like, no, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Does, um, is your other band Al- Alosa? That's so the that one. one. Yeah. That's the one. Um, so you just sing, scream in that? Yeah. You don't play any instrument? I nah, just, just scream in that. Like, Can you play and sing? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't be able to do that. No, like, okay. Um, especially with, like, Elo Scott is real, it's a fast band mm. and um, real, like, sporadic vocal patterns. So oh, okay, yeah. So it's, yeah, it'd be a lot of work. Yeah, I'd. I wouldn't be able to do no that. Tom Araya on that. Yeah, couldn't couldn't yeah. pull that off. That's what I was thinking of then. No, yeah. seems a good fucking bassist and vocals. Tom Araya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do that or no Glenn Benton. But, um. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that um, Glenn Benton, I always thought he'd be a douche because the whole gimmick of the. <laughs> yeah. I, I listened to a podcast of him recently. F- Is that on, the, a while the Gaza ago. one? Oh, I can't remember. It was probably, it wasn't recent, recent, sorry. Um, probably like a year or two ago. But man, he seems like such a cool dude. Yeah. I reckon he's. he's He's been given a bad rap. Yeah. Because I thought, I was going in thinking, I, I just it's want to good. see how much of a douche this guy yeah. is. And then I was like, man, fuck, he's cool. I'm yeah. just hanging out with that guy. Yeah. He's, he's so just, cool. Yeah, he just loves some beer and Harleys, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's, he's just seems like such a, like a bloke, like yeah. such a dude, man. Yeah, like, that's it. Fuck, I could just hang out with that cunt and just, I reckon it'd just be cool to hang out in his garage and drink piss and yeah. talk about motorbikes and mo- and. V8s and yeah. fucking whatever. Be able know. to kick it with him, I reckon. Yeah, sick. yeah, definitely. He seems like one of them guys that's because you know some musicians, they've that's all they've ever done, and they're and they're um you know from big bands, and they're um they don't um oh, I'm going to say this they 
it's because all they've done is music. They haven't mm-hmm. done like say normal day jobs that we've done. It's hard to kind of um, hard to have a like a level normal conversation with them if, if that makes sense because yeah. they've never really lived the yeah, the normal, normal life. <laughs> yeah, whereas yeah. he seems like the kind of guy that's just like some yeah. dude that's hung out in heaps of bars and shit. Yeah, and that's it. He's just like your yeah. typical bogan dude that drives a Kingswood or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we did like um I think it was like a plumber at the start like for his first couple of records he'll still being a plumber yeah right oh and, that's cool then. yeah, yeah. and yeah. like he's like a fair few years ago now i'd imagine but like yeah, he's now broken out of being like i, I can just play death metal yeah yeah living that dream you know yeah there's um yeah because you think there's so, so many bands that um they started when they were teenagers they never probably had a job apart from maybe delivering pizza or something you know like yeah I know that's what Rob Flynn used to do was deliver pizza, I think. And <laughs> yeah. so that's really his only ever day job. So yeah. I guess it would be hard for them to really yeah. um, kind of, you know. It's, uh, I guess, because they always have, like, their mates be all on the road all the time yeah. as well, you know. So yeah, it's, it's a different life. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's even like movie stars, you know. Imagine being like Tom Cruise or something. Um, <laughs> imagine never being able to, to go to the shops. Yeah. Because there's probably guys that are that famous, like Tom Cruise. He could literally never go to a fucking shop. What if you go, I just want to go to the mall and look around? He could never do that, if you think about it. Yeah. He would never be able to go window shopping and go, oh, you know what, I'm going to go out tonight and look for something to buy or whatever. (laughs) He could never do that, ever, Yeah. if you think about it. The things that he'll be wanting to buy would be like, you know. Something really exotic, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, you know, but if you can, got that much money, man. you can own everything. Yeah, it's it's almost like um, I reckon that'd be a kind of misery to it as well because you feel isolated. Yeah, and and you get satisfaction from saving up and buying something. You know yeah. what I mean? When you're like, oh yeah, sweet, say a guitar. Yeah, and you're like, fuck yeah, finally got the I money got for it. it. And yeah. yeah, you got it, and you kind of get that. Um, it has more value to you because you had to put in time to get it. Whereas if, say, you're like a a billionaire or you grew up in, you know, and your dad was a billionaire, like a yeah. fucking a Forbes dude or something. Out, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like nothing would really have much value because you could just buy whatever you want and yeah. kind of, yeah, I reckon there'd be a point where there's too much money you could have, yeah. I think. you got to know the value of a dollar, man. Yeah, I, yeah, That's exactly it. right, man. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to... As much as people go, oh, fuck, I'd love to be rich. I think they'd be too rich. I reckon mm. it'd be good to be comfortable and not have to work, but probably where you could run a, maybe have a business to keep yourself busy and down to yeah. earth a bit and maybe run like a little side business thing or something yeah. cool that you enjoy and then um, something you're passionate about and then have enough money that you can just comfortably live and buy stuff you want to buy. And That's it. Yeah, if yeah. I got that big Powerball, man, I'd probably... St- just do gardening or something, you know, just like a couple of days a week or something. Yeah. Just go around the old lady's house and stuff like that. Oh, pull some weeds. And yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, that's, um, you know, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's um, I don't know if you know, he's got a son called Chester or Chet Hanks. Yeah. 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 You heard of him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a larrikin, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen him on, on Instagram? Uh, I've seen like an um, uh, interview with like, um, I think it was... Channel Five News or something okay, like yeah. that, like some, yeah, you know, funny interview. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, because I know he's done some pretty weird stuff. Um, but I was um, just started following him on Instagram ages ago, and um, he put up a video on YouTube of what it's like to be Tom Hanks' son, and it's like really, um, uh, it's what's the word? Sorry, I'm really tired. I'm struggling for words <laughs> today, but um, it's um, intimate. Kind yeah, of right. like it's he's not joking around. He's yeah, saying, you know, what was it like? Transparent. Yeah, and it's it's actually um, and he's talking about, you know, yes, my parents were, um, well, my dad is really famous, and and yes, I had a privileged life. But he said it's not as good as what you think it would be. Like I didn't have any friends because any friends you wanted or any friends you had were only your friend because your dad was Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks yeah. And he said so. As much as like, um, people can pay me out on social media and this and that and say things about, you know, you're so privileged, you can't complain about anything. He said, yeah, like, yes, I don't deny that. But at the same time, it was pretty depressing as well because... You missed out on these yeah, other things. You, yeah, you, you, heaps of people could have had good friendships and done this and that, but there was always like an ulterior motive on why someone was my friend. They weren't my friend because they liked me yeah. and wanted to hang out with me. They were my f- 
friend firstly because of my dad. Yeah. And then maybe if they liked me, they'd hang around me. But the real reason they ever were um, allured to hang out with me was because of my dad. Yeah, right. And um, and yeah, it's kind of pretty sad because you think about that. Yeah. And and um, and he probably and he said I didn't really get to have a normal childhood. He said his childhood was was great and his parents did an awesome job, but it's still things that affected him. Yeah, um, understandable too, I guess. You know, yeah, it's like, exactly. And he'd be second guessing a lot of things with people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he said, um, you know, like uh, he never, um, he wasn't given like Ferraris and stuff like that. He said for money, his dad would say you can wash my car for sixty bucks, yeah, and right. that's how you get money. And which is a good thing, you know. Yeah. So his dad wasn't like, oh, he's fucking. Go to respect grand, the hustle. Go buy a Maserati or fucking yeah, whatever. Um, I like it when parents do that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. So like my neighbours and they got like two little twins, like mm. two six year olds, and um, yeah, they always come around and they like they'll buy the big packets of chockies and yeah. they'll sell them for a dollar. Yeah, and it's like that's a hustle right there. You know, you yeah, got ten cool. in there, and it's like yeah, I appreciate it. So I'll I'll buy five. Yeah, and, uh, and that's you see, awesome. Yeah, you see them just doing little stuff like that and the yeah. old school lemonade stand. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, and that that's cool. Um, yeah. Where did I, I'm sure I saw one recently somewhere, a lemonade stand. Um, and I was like, fuck, I haven't seen that for ages. Yeah. It? It's cool That's when awesome. you see that shit, man. That's yeah, awesome. I love it, eh? But, um, and, uh, you know, um, Halloween. Yeah. Recently, um, I'm a bit of a Grinch, like anything like Halloween, Christmas and that. I'm like, oh, you <laughs> fuck, it's all <laughs> dumb yank shit or whatever, you know. And, <laughs> and I'm a bit of a pessimist. Yeah. Right. And my wife's like, no, we're going to we're gonna um, take the kids trick-or-treating. I'm like, oh. It's like yeah. an Aussie thing. You give a fuck, <laughs> and then um, because you know nowadays, you you or well, your neighbours sound like it's different, but you know a lot of people don't really interact with their neighbours. You kind of come home, yeah. go inside. You don't have anything to do with anyone else, and people are fairly isolated these days in, yeah. in that way. Like um, you know, when was the last time someone just come over and knocked on your door, and you weren't like, who the fuck's knocking on my door? Yeah, you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? that's uh, it. yeah. And then so we went out and saw all the neighbours and people around from the suburb and fuck it was awesome man yeah. it was actually really really fucking cool, cool. sense and, of community and everyone, yeah and I was like man there's heaps of cool people around here yeah. and um, and all the kids were having fun and everyone's giving out candies and stuff like that and yeah. it was just just cool chatting with people and just saying hello and and, yeah. and I was like man that's actually I wish fun. we did this more like you know how you hear mm. some streets will have like a barbecue and everyone yeah. on the street knows they each cook other out. <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah. the Yanks probably do and it's yeah. like man that's fucking that's yeah. cool and I wish we did that around here because because yeah. life's becoming increasingly more online and yeah. more isolated and uh, and um, it's funny there's this comedian in the US Sebastian Maniscalco don't know if you heard of him no. Italian comedian is so fucking funny and um He's got this skit about when your doorbell rings and he's like, oh, you know, he goes, years ago, 20 years ago, when your doorbell rung, you'd like jump in the air and then so like run it. up and slide <laughs> up to the door in your socks and, and then open it and you're like so happy that someone's come yeah. around. And and um, because there was no mobile phones and all that, yeah, people, you know, your relatives or mates just rock up at your house. And if you're yeah. home, you're home. And if they weren't, then they'd yeah. go to another mate's That's house. It, yeah. And he's like, he goes, now people ring your doorbell. You're like, Everyone get out, get out. Yeah. And then you're like, what's going what on? The fuck, what the <laughs> fuck's here? Yeah. A case in the joint. <laughs> yeah, because I've had a few people knock on our door and I'll look at the security cameras on yeah. my phone yeah, right. and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, go to the fucking door. Yeah. And I'm like, if it's someone that is, you know, going around just knocking on doors, selling solar or something, I'm like, yeah. I don't even going to fucking answer the door. Yeah. And keep on knocking, I ain't coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And then... um. And then sometimes, <laughs> this is pretty bad. I hope no one, no one knows listening to this that's done this, but I've had people come around and I just can't be fucked up. <laughs> and I'll just, I'm not, the cars are in the garage. They wouldn't know if I'm home or not. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then if the kids are like, shh, shh. You know, yeah, don't answer the door. <laughs> Shush. Don't want to know yeah, we're here. Dad's chilling today. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just like, sometimes I'm in the mood. I'm like, I don't want to fucking talk to anyone. Yeah. Just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love the like sense of fucking like, um, community though, man. Like, yeah, uh, I I get in, I get a bit festive, man. Like, do you? Yeah, like 
Well, um, I've had the best uh, Christmas decorations on my street for like four years in a really? row. Yeah. Fuck, that's interesting. Yeah. There's this lady up the road. She keeps on trying to one up me. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like so an do you unspoken like sneak over battle. Night army crawl up and <laughs> cut her fucking yeah, lights. Yeah. Hit the meter box fluke. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. But uh, yeah, she'll put up more lights. And be like, All right, I'm getting to blow up Santa. Yeah. And, you know, she'll get like you know some reindeer or something. Be like, well, I'll get more lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Like, Halloween, I did this year again, and um. Because growing up down Denmark, mm. I used to do it back then. Was that where you grew up? Yeah. My dad lives down there. Yeah, right. it's beautiful, man. And that Shadforth or whatever it's called. Oh, at Mount Shaddy. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. lives there. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful down there, Cool man. spot. It's just so far away. Yeah, that's it. And like real <laughs> tough at work and shit. Yeah, I can imagine it would be. Because my dad's like, oh, why don't you come down here and drive cranes? I'm like... There's no yeah, crane where? companies down there, yeah. and if there is, they pay shit. Yeah, so nuts. Nah. Yeah, fair enough too. <laughs> yeah, we'd do like Halloween down there, and it's like you'd get nothing. Yeah, like maybe some shortbread or some shit. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. like I do it up here just because it's like oh, uh, now I can do it for the people who come through and yeah, you know, I'll always put corpse paint, just oh, like yeah, yeah. black metal myself up and yeah, yeah, that's cool. You know, put a pirate suit on my dog or something. You know yeah. and. Yeah, I got cleared out of chockies and shit this year, eh? I was oh, spewing about that. I was like, man, I'll have a couple of caramello koalas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a few left yeah, over that's later. it. <laughs> no, I got fucking rinsed. <laughs> Didn't get no goodies. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, there's um, there's a house up the road um, and they, I, th- I don't know if they win a competition or something. Maybe they do, but they're, every year they've um, got the full decorations and it takes them three months to set it up because I talked yeah, to the right. old lady. She's from um, Pennsylvania. And she's she's really old, um, yeah. and she goes, oh, back in Pennsylvania, we're really festive and love our Christmas." Because I just yeah. asked her once, I'm like, "Why do you do all this? You let because people walk through the house. It's like a walk through. It's like yeah, they right. set the house up. That's next and you level. You can go in every room, and and it, this is fucking next level, man. Yeah, it's, it's insane the amount of detail and everything. Their whole house is converted, everything. Yeah, so right. for three months, they pretty much upend their life, and <laughs> and then around Christmas, um, you can just walk through the house and. And, um, and yeah, I just got chatting to her. I was like, why do you do this? And she goes, oh, well, we've got a charity thing here because you can put like a donation. Uh-oh. And um, and, then, and she goes, yeah, we just run it for a lot. There's a few Christmas houses in Mandra and we just try to have a really good one. And yeah, um, and, and yeah um, it's just it's so cool, man. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. you're ever down this way again around Christmas, you get to check it out. It's That's it's, full on. <laughs> there's probably ones in Perth, actually. I haven't look, ever looked into it, but... I know that one's really famous down here now. Everyone knows about the Meadow Springs Christmas yeah, right. house. They got and, um, the rep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really well done. And and she goes, yeah, it takes us three months to set it up and three months to pack it down. Yeah, right. Um, so usually around um, October, you start seeing them yeah, set right. it all up. It's it's yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. It's, um, and they even got like a snow machine, but it's like foam. Oh yeah. yeah and in one of the rooms, it's like all Christmassy snow themed. Shit. And, and then they've got another one that's got like a train going through like a mountains and stuff and that's all themed. And then, um, man, kids just lose their shit at it. It's just, yeah. Every, you can go in every room in their house and it's all themed and, and decorated. Yeah, right. Um, Very smells of gingerbread and stuff. Yeah, and she, she and she gives away because um, because she does this, there's that Baker's Delight just down at the shops. Yeah. There, and they give her heaps of like sweet breads and stuff. Oh, that's cool. To give away. And then you come in there and she'll, she's got just like plates set out and... And it's cool because people come in there and, and as much as um, I would never open my house up to strangers really because I just don't trust people. Yeah. You know, you never know who's looking and scoping stuff out. Yeah. This house, I think, just puts off that vibe that you probably don't get anyone that's got any ill intentions. Yeah. Because at first I was like, who the fuck would let strangers <laughs> yeah. walk through their house? Yeah. And then you go there and everyone's super yeah. merry and yeah. joy. Yeah, you know? old jolly. You know? Yeah, jolly, that's <laughs> the one. Yeah, and everyone's, you know says hello and yeah. and all that and it's, um and it's like oh yeah no this this is cool because I think it brings the best out in people yeah you know what I mean yeah um, yeah they're doing their job then I guess it's that's what they're going for yeah well and that's that's like a good byproduct of it as much as they just love the festive thing and getting their house you know done up for it and showing people yeah. another thing is they're bringing the community together yeah and, that's um, it. And, you know, and especially now that you know things are becoming more and more isolated especially in the um all the lockdowns you know oh yeah. You know, you can't visit people, you can't talk to people, and you, yeah. and all, you can't even go outside or whatever. You know, it really for a while there for that two years, I think it really it took its toll. Yeah, I think, and I think it um kind of did a bit of permanent damage to people's want to off the whole community vibe. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <coughs> like now you go to the shops and you stand in line and if you're behind someone and you're less than one and a half metres, they kind of like look over their shoulder and yeah. they're like, you're a bit close to yeah. me. You're not getting in my pocket, are you? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whereas before, you know, you could pretty much fucking have your head up someone's ass and they didn't care. Yeah, now, that's now it. Now people are like, oh, 1.5, they're almost going to get a tape measure. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets a little bit like, you know, how you're going when it's just like, just, it's... If you want to stand in line, stand in line. Yeah, like, you know, it don't... definitely psychologically, it, mm. it definitely um, altered the psyche of people so much. I've noticed just yeah. even travelling when we went to um, Singapore and the Philippines, mm. it's just there. Everyone's still wearing masks, even though there's not a mandate anymore. Yeah, right. And um, I wasn't walking around without. I was walking around without a mask because yeah. I'm just like I'm not wearing it. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, we're done with this shit. Yeah. Um, let's move on. Yeah, let's move the fuck on and. And, you know, I'm not going to get into them, whatever, but, you know, I think the, the, the science around the mask was a bit iffy anyway. People said mm-hmm. it, it worked some, and a lot of people said it didn't. So yeah. it's like... If you can smell a fart through it. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> you know? exactly. And it's, and it's like, yeah, and so... And you're just seeing everyone wearing them, and I'm like, yeah, why? There was a couple of like, kids wearing them at the show last night, eh? Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, right. I get it if someone's yeah. sick and they don't want to um, yeah. transmit anything. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough, that, and that's cool. And and in saying that, I did notice though a lot of um, Asian countries seem to wear masks, like China and that. And then you see, like when I went to Japan in 2014, heaps of people were, were wearing masks. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, but we got that good air, you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, can, exactly. we can take a big whiff of it. You know, it's great. <laughs> yeah, we got that country air. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, it's um, it was just yeah, it was crazy to see just so many people still and still got the perspex up everywhere. I'm like, come on, yeah, right. perspex ain't doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> if there's <laughs> like a really some deadly disease, a bit of perspex is not going to save your life. Because <laughs> you know what, that money I just gave you, I just maybe coughed on my hand before you yeah. saw me, <laughs> yeah, that's and I it. gave you that money under the perspex. Yeah. You then put in your till, and then you scratch your nose. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like. Yeah. yeah, it's like an intimidation thing. But anyways, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't like because it it's been done to death. Yeah. These discussions about the pandemic thing, but yeah. yeah but um, <laughs> one thing I will say about it though, it's like so many people were walking their dogs before. Yeah. And it's like because I always take Brisket on a big walk, you know. And Is that his name, Brisket? Yeah, she's my little <laughs> roller mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll go yeah. on a walk, and you know, you always see the same people every day, you know? and then. Yeah. I, all of a sudden, it's like seeing like thirty percent more people. I was like, "What the fuck? Everyone's got a dog now." Yeah. And then when um, you know, the things loosened up a bit, never see them again. I was like, "Where did all those dogs go?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Like, What's happened? Or oh, <laughs> do you mean as if they were getting them so they could get out? So yeah. Have an excuse. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. All of a sudden, people were walking their dogs. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You never walked it before, <laughs> yeah. or you just got this to get out. You know. Yeah, to get out. Yeah, yeah. it's an excuse to get out, and you got the uh, yeah, yeah. got yeah. the pooch off you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, um, what was I going to say? Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <All good. laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's even like it just affected everyone's mind so much. Even now, when someone sneezes around me, I would never have given a fuck before. But now I'm kind of like, you kind of double take. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. like? Yeah. Like, fuck, who's that? Yeah. That's Watch where you're sneezing. Yeah. Just don't spit on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's um even now, like it even even though I'm like a massive skeptic, even the whole thing I was like This yeah. is all bullshit. Um, even though it still did yeah wiggle its way into my mind that if someone sneezes or coughs around me, I'm like, ooh, like yeah. ooh. you know, whereas <laughs> yeah. before I didn't really care. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't blink an eye before, you know. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. But it's funny now when you sneeze, you feel so guilty. <laughs> You're like yeah. looking around, fuck, who's, who's looking at me? And yeah. everyone looks at you like, Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. Yeah. <laughs> Leper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um uh yeah, so anyway, we'll probably get back to talking about music again. Yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, chat, man. <laughs> what's uh, what's next for Paradise? Uh, well, we've like the show yesterday was our um, first show with our new drummer, mm-hmm. Andy. And um, oh, so who was the guy he's had when we played with you in that band? Um, that was Dan Granger, the session musician. Oh, I was gonna say, fuck, he's good at drums. <laughs> oh, dude's a weapon, man. Like, <laughs> so fucking good. Yeah, he's like. Repertoires, I mean, like it's like sixty fucking bands he's been in. Oh, so really? Like, like yeah, like yeah, right. toured for like international bands. I think, uh, I think it was Incantation. Like 
like he went over did like a big Asian tour drumming for them and yeah, that, okay. like, is it mostly metal that he's done or does he do um various different styles of metal from like power metal to like grinding death metal to yeah, okay. you know like, it's just like a awesome, awesome dude awesome drummer mm. and um good sense of humor yeah you know, which is important yeah definitely but um yeah and so with what's next for pirates like um yeah, so now we've got like a solid lineup again mm. moving forward. Um, Lewis has got a couple of little things he's been sitting on. Um, I think it's going to go to Sean, probably you had on earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, just going to demo out some shit. Oh, so you're working with him? Yeah, yeah. just for like um, scratch tracks, really. Yeah. So I can have longer than 48 hours to write lyrics to. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah know? that's cool. Yeah, that's, but, that's the good thing about when you get um, a bit of leeway with the time, you're not, not really, you're not sacrificing creativity. That's it, you know. It's like, I don't feel like I'm just burning it out. But um, yeah. so we're doing like, hoping for a five track EP, like the two singles we got out now will be on there. Mm. And it's all going to be like mythical beasts yep. for it. So it's like the last song, Oceanic Atrophy. Like, that was cool. Cool and, video too. Thanks, man. <laughs> that black shit on my face for it, that was like custard and... um the name food dye oh yeah really yeah and it was like read the bottle it's like don't use more than two drops per like kilo of ice carcinogenic and i was like fuck i'll just use like 48 it's <laughs> <laughs> like so, yeah when i was like finished that i was like man this better not stain my skin <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> just like you gotta work the next day yeah work no yeah it's like you can't be doing blackface <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like well, racist this, yeah this could be terrible <laughs> you're cancelled yeah your band's cancelled <laughs> everything but it came out great yeah. and um yeah so like trying to do each song about like a mythical beast like yeah. with a different like an element behind it so it's like infernus was just like fire yeah but because it was such a like a like jump in the minute thing, like Earth, fire yeah wind, water heart that's it <laughs> yeah we've got to have the rings man <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah just trying to think um next one want to write about like thinking like earth <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and i'll do like yeah, the windigo he's like um some gnarly spirit dude who like yeah. infects the mind and like the mind of the greedy oh and yeah then they get like obsessed with with like themselves so yeah. much they they consume themselves they start to eat themselves yeah that's cool so i was like that's like yeah some cool little like folk story and shit like that it kind so. of ties into real things really as well yeah that's, that's probably yeah. the cool thing about doing fantasy kind of lyrics is that um you can write about real things that you see yeah but kind of mask it with the fantasy thing so that people aren't hearing the same lyrics about like you know um Rise above the lies. Yeah, you know, that's the most cliche yeah. thing. Yeah. Or like, open your eyes, or like, yeah. um, the stand government for you. Yeah, man. the government this or the, all the cliches that we've yeah. heard since the nineties and metal had been doing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I just want to hear something about some big gnarly beast. Dude, yeah, but at least you can you. probably, you know, you could be talking about these super rich elite billionaires. Yeah, that it could be eating themselves. Yeah, that, well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's cool. Yeah, and um, yeah. So it's. And like with Elosa, like some of the stuff that like I've written with that, it's like from like sayings, like so, like the you know mad as a hatter. Yeah, you know it's like that's from people getting mercury poisoning from making hats back oh, in the yeah, day. Yeah, so it's just about some dude who gets mercury poisoning. Yeah, because that's just, that's right. I remember reading or hearing about some. That's the one thing about the Alice in Wonderland. There's so much weird shit about that. Yeah, that's really deep. Yeah, and, and um, you not many people it. know about. Yeah, and, and it's like, man, this guy was on another level, man. <laughs> yeah. Lewis Carroll. There's like, layers. Yeah, that's for sure. It's crazy, man. Yeah, so it's like writing about that one. That's like um, you know, the single that we put out. It's about like a dude who makes a hat, poisons himself to lose his mind, and he wants to make the perfect hat. Yeah, so right. he's yeah, like that's cool, man. I yeah, love that. ends up like you know making a hat out of a human because oh, it's that's the cool. perfect hide, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's like just and Dead Ringer is another one. It's like you know, back in the day, they used to have um, bells above graves. Yeah. Because it was like um, during the bubonic plague and yeah. stuff, like people would be like in such like a comatose state that when they got moved around, they wouldn't wake up, but they're still alive. So they would like get buried alive and um, they'll wake up buried. Yeah, okay. So it's like they um, 
you know, they would hear like screaming oh, yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. So they've decided to put like a string Into down. The casket. Yeah, so yeah. they can ring it so yeah, they can get I've, dug up. I think I, now that you're saying that, that jogs my memory, I've heard that. Because there's heaps of old sayings. That, um, I'm always like, I wonder where that saying come from. They'll look it up and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Shit, there's actually really deep meaning behind that and, and a fucked up meaning too yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's it. So it's, like, it's kind of cool like reading up about some of that shit. And, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, like we've written up all our stuff for that now so yeah need to write more stuff like you know, just keep that pen sharp yeah yeah definitely well there's um a book i had years ago called um how to remove a human's brain or something like that and it's heaps yeah. of fucked up medical stories yeah right from throughout history and yeah, um man. and it's got ones from all all the way back to like um you know before before like medical or science stuff so mm. um back in you know say a king was out in battle when he got his leg um, cut by a sword and it got infected, well, they didn't know that you had a circulation back then, so they would measure your leg and go, right, I reckon there's this much blood in there, so they would drain out. (laughs) And then people would, like, die from blood loss. And and, and, and I had heaps of stories of, like, real real things that had happened. and, um, And then they thought... Before, like, science was established and all that, they thought, like, um, pain cancels out pain. So, say you stubbed your toe on a fucking tree stump back then, well, then they'd go, right, we'll, we'll hit your other toe with a with a rock and that'll cancel out the pain. And just and so much naivety with yeah. things. And then even with the um, going back to the plague, apparently people used to keep smelly goats in their houses because they thought the plague was a, was a smell. They didn't know that it was on the fleas or whatever the fuck it was on um they thought it was a smell and because there were so many dead bodies and all that and they thought that's how it spread yeah so then they would even put farts in jars (laughs) and smell farts and yeah Yeah, and it's um it's all true stuff in this book and there's humans aren't as smart as people think (laughs) (laughs) sniffing farts then they were just (laughs) yeah they were just so naive with things and then it went to like you know electric electric um sorry electrocution for you know people they thought were insane or whatever, yeah. whereas they might have just had some kind of ailment. So they zapped the fuck out of them in, you know, when people, they locked them up in asylums and then fucking zapped the fuck out of these people <laughs> and tortured them and given them lobotomies. And yeah, so right. how many people were just misdiagnosed and had their yeah. lives ruined? And, yeah. And, um, it's like the, um, what's the name? Elizabethan Br- British like yeah. era. So they used to go to like Egypt and they'd like take all the, the mummies and stuff and, um, they would eat them. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, I think it was like one of the, one of the kings. He was like jerky. <laughs> yeah, that's it, preserved in honey and stuff, you know. Yeah. But uh, one of the kings would have like terrible headaches and that, so he believed that like a ground up human skull was like curing it for yeah. him. So he was just like on a diet of like human skull. That's fucked up. Yeah, it's like apparently there would would be a lot more mummies, like yeah. if the um you know Elizabeth Elizabethan British. Yeah. Didn't come through and just mung them all down. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Well, that's like um, apparently um, uh, there's, you know, them tribes that like do cannibalism, they found heaps of them get all these hole, holes in their brain with these parasites from eating human flesh and, yeah, right. and all that. You can write a story about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. That's there's it. another one as well is they, I think it was Romans or, or one of the ancient civilizations used to use bodies as a lubrication, like blood and all that, um, yeah. to move stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like um, you wouldn't want to be like, you know, the guy on hand for that. You yeah, know? but you could write a cool story about that. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Using bodies to move big blocks. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Just lie down here, man. Just got to put the cinder block over here. Yeah, you'd be right. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think it was like dead bodies or something, I guess. Yeah. Or, or maybe someone that, that uh, the king was like, fuck it, yeah. take him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you stole a bit of bread. Yeah. Now we're going to have yeah, to yeah, use you. going to be lubrication. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Spoken for now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, it, how was what happened when um, Pi was used because that band kind of went defunct for a while, hey, or something like that? Um, that what happened? I think it's like the the driving force of that band is Lewis and Trav. Yeah, okay. Like, they do a great job at it too. And um, I think it was just a bit of life, you know, happens. Yeah, because like, um, they've got kids in that, hey? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think Trav just just had his like daughter or something mm-hmm. like that as well and lewis was busy with other aspects of life and that too and 
and I think just as a band at the time, I think that's what that would, was best for the band. And yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, like once you get bitten by the bug, you you're always yeah. gonna be coming back. And yeah, seems like now's the time for them. They felt like yeah, because they did like a reunion show, and that was only gonna be like the only show. Mm. But um, they just loved it so much. They're like, yeah, we can't give up this again. Yeah, yeah. So they decided to fire it all up again and keep on moving. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, how did? So how long was the band not playing shows in that for? How many years? It's like, like eight or nine years, man. Yeah. Okay. So. So when did you? Because if you've only been doing vocals, say five years. Yeah. When did you? Are you fairly recent to the band then? Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah, I joined them like. A year ago. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, right. when that Infernus clip came out, it was like my oh, first right. thing with them, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I that's never knew it. that. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> trivia. That's it. But, um, yeah, it's like Damo, the guy who did the um, EP, um, he comes out to some of the shows and that. And, yeah. Yeah, shows some support. Yeah. Awesome dude. So yeah, that's cool. You know, same as, like, Jesse, the, like, um, the OG bassist. Like, I think he's just, like, moving on with different aspects of his life mm. and... He comes out to the shows as well. Like he came out to the one that we played together. Yeah. You know, showed some love. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, um, so so they they kind of just after the eight years or so, were they just texting each other and going, hey, should we just do a show or something? Or? Yeah, I think that's how it went down, eh? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, they just like wanted to, you know, just do it again, just to have a, some fun. Yeah. Because the first show they did, was, like the reunion show was at Lucy's Love Shack, that little... Mm. small venue and they packed it out to the nights yeah. you know so they're like oh, oh man, wow yeah we, we can do this you know so. so the band had a pretty established history then yeah kind like of, yeah. looking back like when i joined i was like have a little bit of a stalk you know see what mm. they've been up to like you know prior to read like you know starting to back up so you know, they had some awesome support bands that they'd done there like, support like all shall perish and yeah, all this okay. sort of stuff Shit. and yeah right did like a Australian tour with Mate and Suffer and all that sort of stuff <clears throat> back in the day. Fuck, that's big. Yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah, they've, they've put in the groundwork. Like, mm. their work ethic's nuts. Like, especially, like, yeah, especially Trav and yeah, okay. Lewis. Like, yeah. I'll have to pick their brains. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. I'm just finding it, um, we find it hard to get, you know, I suppose every band's going to have this struggle with getting people to listen to you now, you know, getting noticed. Um, yeah. Because... Me and Sean were speaking about this. You know, it's more, it's less about the music now, more about the image, and which yeah. sucks. But. Yeah, and it's just to, um, for the markets to get itself out there. It's like with Elosic, we're a brand new band, man. Got like nothing really, mm. but um, we just put out a single and hit up Slam Worldwide because yeah. they've got like, you know, like a massive audience, yeah, like yeah. quarter of a mil on YouTube, sort of thing. Yeah, so it's like hit them up and to put the single out through them and they help with the promotion of it and it's you actually see the the feedback on it which is great yeah so it's it's, not, it's had a, obviously had a good response and yeah that's yeah. it and it's like there you got to use these promoters these days as tools yeah because that whole like get out there and just grind like you know put yourself further in debt going to yeah. you know cities to play around it's like you got the internet now it's like yeah. use this tool yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. it's, hard. it's so saturated though with with music and yeah. um, and it's now like because no one's given out cassettes and shit like they would have been back in the nah, day. And, that's it. And um, now it's yeah, like it's easier to get out there, but there's also just so much, um, so much, so much music, and it's just hard. I th- it's like <laughs> an yeah. interesting thing. It's like with um like putting out music. It's like one of the boys in Pi was like, oh, like, so we're going to put out a CD, like physicals for this EP. And Trav's like, yeah, that's actually like a genuine question. Mm. You know, because before I was like, of course you're going to bloody put out CDs, yeah. man. But now it's like, you know, is people buying CDs? It's like, I buy CDs. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of physicals. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, how many people buy CDs? Yeah, well, yeah, our car doesn't even have a CD player. <laughs> yeah. New cars don't, so. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I'll, I'll be buggered. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. me CDs, man. Yeah, because I've got that um, the latest machine head record that of Kingdom and Crown, and oh yeah, and I was um, and the missus got it for me for I think Father's Day, I think, 
And um, I was like, oh, I'm going to chuck that in the car. Yeah. And then I got in the car and I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> no, see, it's one of them new Rav 4s and we've, we've had it for a bit, but I'll just drive the thing. I don't really. Yeah. And I usually listen to Spotify through it. And then I was like, looking in the glove box and there's no city. What? Where the yeah. fuck? <laughs> and it just doesn't have one. So I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah, right. Oh. Get the old Walkman out, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big headphones and the Walkman yeah. just cruising around. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so I guess CDs are, I guess, on the way out. But then maybe they're a lot of vinyls. People will collect them. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like, I collect I like both, having the like, physical thing, you know. Yeah, that's it. And, like, you read all the thank yous in there and that. Yeah. Sometimes they're pretty funny. Yeah. You know, it's just, um, it's a good way to finding, like, you know, people to do stuff, like getting stuff mixed and mastered. Yeah. Like, this um, band Summoning the Lich. Yeah. Awesome band, like sick mellow death sort of band. Um yeah, we were like talking about like oh, who are we gonna get to mix and master our stuff. And it's like, well, Summoning the Lich is fucking their mix sounds awesome, you know, mm. so you know, got the C D of that and you know, went through well, that's mix and master. could easily just Google it, but yeah. it doesn't feel as cool, you see. No, no, no that's <laughs> so, right. Yeah, it's like, no, I gotta dig through my little collection here yeah. and <laughs> let's see what we got. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, this yeah. I miss the physical aspect of music, eh? Because yeah, now really the only thing you do besides recording music is is like the um, artwork, and that's just to go on like yeah, so on someone's phone screen. You know, yeah. it's not really it's not getting printed on anything, and that's it. And yeah. it's to try to make things like people want to buy stuff more. It's like you got to try try new things you know it's mm. like different it's like mm. being like tossed around the idea of putting out like a ep on um a usb but yeah. having like the guitar pro tabs on there oh yeah that's cool. yeah no, that's so cool. it's like oh yeah if you like these riffs we we got you covered you know yeah like, yeah that's cool that's a good idea just like yeah just little things to sweeten yeah. the bundle you know yeah and like everyone like like imagine a lot of guitarists anyways they they fuck with guitar pro yeah, you know. Yeah. So, I um, I ha- I've never, I've never actually um, written anything on Guitar Pro. I use an old thing called Tabit. It's really old. Tabit. Yeah, Tabit. It's yeah, right. it's fucking. It's really old and really basic. But if it works, it works. Yeah, I'll just use that to, um, I'll just tab out stuff and send it. And it's it's there's no slides or bends or anything on it. Yeah. But I'll just like put a little note there or whatever, and I'll send that yeah. to our bassist, and another guitarist. Yeah. Um, for all their stuff, or sometimes I might even just do a quick video and just go, "Oh, this is how you play the riff." Yeah. Send it to them. Um, because Guitar Pro seems well, there's a bit of a learning curve to it, I think, but maybe there's not. Yeah. But well, it depends. It seems like there is. Like, but... Guitar Pro Five is what I'm all about. That's yeah. like straight down the line, you know. Mm-hmm. Not much bells and whistles. Very Castlevania sounding MIDI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got the new ones. Like I think I, don't even, I think it might even be up to ten or something nowadays. Yeah. It's like, I don't fuck with that, but it's nah. like they've actually got like guitar tones yeah so yeah. it's like you put it in it's like it actually sounds like you know, a natural electric guitar there's playing these riffs people caught out doing that as well like yeah <laughs> from um rings of satin that lucas man yeah he gets caught out for so much shit yeah but... well, i remember years ago i don't know now about now i know that he is a very good guitarist i know that yeah He's man can play fucking awesome guitar i'll have no problem admitting that but yeah. i know that years ago they like, caught him out speeding stuff up and also um, someone, yeah, caught him out using... Um, the MIDI tones. Yeah, they yeah. were like, that's fucking MIDI. Yeah. And I then, think that was for yeah. his, like, solo project yeah, or something. Yeah, something like that, yeah. 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 Ring and, was, and he was eating, like, a banana in the video <laughs> with a skin on it still. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, I just remember that and that sticks out. But, yeah. um, and I was like, this guy's a fucking douche. Yeah. But then I watched a video where um, I think Jared Dines tried calling him out for miming stuff live. Yeah, and then he made a video, and then he played some stuff. I was like, the, he can play mm. yeah. definitely, and because um, he records yeah. every set that he does. Yeah, so it's like because it's all run through laptops, this yeah. and the other. So it's like he can go through and listen to his set after mm. the night and be like, well, I got to practice this sweep, yeah, or whatnot. So he uses it as like a like a diary, I guess. Yeah, so. I think he's probably started out with a bit of deception there, but I think now. You know, they're too big to fake it now, probably. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So he's get a legit play the shit, and, and he can probably. Yeah. And well, the new album that came out, was the album EP, but, like, came out a few months ago, it's basically just, like, uh, polyphia. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they don't have a vocalist anymore. Like, yeah, and yeah, that's just... right, yeah. Because I, I never got into them. Um, I'm I'm not into them. It's not my thing, but yeah. um, 
I was just reading about them and I was like, oh, yeah, she, they don't have a vocalist now because they had one, um, yeah, before. And um, and what was there was another um, – there's been a few big bands like that um, around that – because some of them guys been in other bands. Like there's, they had that um, – Miles Baker, Dem- yeah. Miles Dimitri Baker. Yeah, it's, fuck, he's amazing guitar. Yeah, man, I love like, his guitar playing. Because yeah, him and the drummer or something went out and uh, did uh, um, took Interloper. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a whole different sound as well. But like that's sick. Like, mm. and the other guy in that band, like Andrew or whatever, I think he plays played or plays still in the Faceless. Yeah, guy. Okay, yeah, like. He's got another band called Vampire Squid. Yeah. And it's it's sick, man. It's yeah, like, right. It reminds me a little bit of Car Bomb in some, yeah, okay. some senses. But it's like, yeah, he, he's Squid. like singing and playing these riffs. And it's like the coordination from what he's singing and what he's playing. It's like your brain's just like, what the hell? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Like, you know, it, it doesn't work for my head. But like, <laughs> it sounds sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you, um, speaking of weird band names, have you ever heard of that band called Sluggage? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they sing everything's about like yeah, the slugs, slugs from outer space coming down and yeah, and they're all the song names are like um hail the mollusks <laughs> yeah, and, and like um spore ensemble instead of war ensemble like, <laughs> yeah. and like, stuff like that and, yeah yeah that's the um the drummer from Black Dahlia Murder plays for them now oh really as well yeah they're they're a fucking awesome band man yeah dude I but... thought that'd be shit when I was like <laughs> this is gonna be some gimmick thing yeah and then um then because it was only two guys at first wasn't it yeah I think they had programmed drums at first and then yeah and I was like man this is fucking awesome it's, yeah they rip dude like, yeah, yeah yeah they're really good um it's like sometimes you hear those these bands with like weird ass names you know what's going on and you give it a check out you know yeah i got to say this is actually pretty good <laughs> yeah <laughs> change your name yeah <laughs> so, an, another um good muse though is that Jason Richardson yep. he, yeah yeah he's, he's only young too and he, fuck he's awesome yeah he plays he shreds I'm not into his music to be honest but I'll, I'll watch his Instagram every now and then and I get pissed off at how good he is <laughs> yeah. and how shit I am. <laughs> he's clean too, eh? Yeah, he's just he's really good at guitar. And I always thought, oh, he's faking it. But then I saw a video of him playing at Nam. Yeah. And right. I was like, fuck, he's actually yeah. really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's so, so many good guitarists out there now, or musicians and drummers and that now on mm. social media. Oh, it's, <clears throat> so I remember, like, first hearing Arch Spire. Oh, yeah. And just being ben like, Lam. oh, what a beast, dude. Like, all of them, they're just absolute machines, that whole band, eh? And I was just thinking, like, oh, I wonder if they can pull it off live, like, surely, but, like, I want to I want experience it. And when they came to Perth, mm. I was, like, went and checked it out, and, like, Ollie, the singer's just, like, yeah, he's, like, the tech nine of death metal, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking, yeah, just hyper speeds, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nails it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good. I um, always knew that they'd be good live because I remember I've just followed... <clears throat> Dean Lamb for years yeah, right. on social media and um, and just always remember him putting up like he'd play like Beethoven stuff all of them symphony things on yeah. guitar and I was like this guy's fucking awesome guitar yeah. and he's putting in so much work yeah. so he's definitely can play what, what yeah. they're writing because then they'd put up stuff of their music and it's so erratic and fast and, and, and I was <laughs> like fucking hell but then I'm like I don't know if any doubt that he can play that yeah. Was, um, yeah I was more like like um, curious of the vocalist being like, how, how yeah. how's he gonna, how does he do it tight, you know? But yeah, he's he's a, just he's a weird dude. He's hilarious for starters. Yeah. But like, um, how he he's like does inhales and exhales. So he will like exhale a line, and then like also do like inhales for a line. Yeah, right. And he's like got like a reserve like of air, and I don't know how he does it. But he just balloons out. And it's like he just gives himself a beer belly full of oxygen. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like strange. Yeah, he looks like an alien. I've seen like this, like um, what's the name? <laughs> Studio docu like footage of him doing. He's like, yeah, like this thing here, like patting his belly. He's like, yeah, that's like my reserve tank. I was no, like, yeah, Holy right. Shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. How you doing that? It's like a colostomy bag that yeah. he's plumbed up to his lungs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Never run out of air down here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's strange. Hey, that I suppose um, there's always people going to be. You know, you see it like innovating and yeah, with their instrument and it's um, doing something different, doing something different. Yeah, it's like Travis Ryan from Cattle Decapitation yeah, he, with those like awesome, like singy, like harsh, clean. They're not clean, but they're like these real, um, almost like an angsty sort of vocal. Yeah, 
and they they just take you away. They're awesome. It's like I've yeah. tried to emulate that before, man. I just sound like a cat gets strangled. <laughs> yeah, right. And I, was like, I have no idea how he does yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, he does heaps of weird stuff with his tongue and that. I've, yeah, I watched a live video and um, because I've I've never been really into him. Um, I don't. To be honest, I don't listen to much extreme stuff. Um, I appreciate it all though, but yeah. but I was just uh, looking him up on YouTube a while ago and I was like, fucking. He does some weird shit, man. Yeah. His, with his mouth his, and all these faces and yeah. that. But that's to make how you it all get come them. out. Exactly, yeah. man. It's like, yeah, it's like you might look like a bit of a spook with your tongue like rolling out the yeah. side or something. It's like, not so you but look possessed, cool. but it's so you sound sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, that, uh, you know, the CJ from um, Thy Art. Yeah. I can't believe when, when I saw them live with Carnifex, I can't believe how effortless yeah. he is with his vocals. You kind yeah. of, I was like, it's almost like that's on a backing track because he yeah. sounds so good, but he's just like so just, casual. Yeah, he just like moves around. Eh? just like so like you know. Yeah, like but it a sounds gangster. so intense. I'm like, how, yeah. how, is, how is he so relaxed, man? Yeah, he's, he's just got his vocals dialed in. He's just that good yeah. at it. Yeah, knows his pocket and he fucking rolls. Yeah, in and he's day. just comfortable to just belt that shit out and and he's just cruising along doing it. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, it's, whereas you see, like, say for example, when you watch any footage of Bring Me the Horizon. Ollie Sykes is always looks pain. It looks yeah. like he's in pain all the time when he's doing his screams. He's always holding there, giving it his all. Yeah, yeah. and I noticed that with um, say Phil Anselmo. Oh yeah, because you know it seems people that have done damage or aren't comf- doing it that's not comfortable for them. Yeah, they're kind of like always holding there and yeah. and it um unless they're trying to push some more air out or something. Yeah, but like. it just looks like painful, yeah. man. But then you see guys like that. Yeah. CJ is just like oh, yeah, yes. it shouldn't be like painful. It's like, mm. you know, um, Will Ramos, like, you know, yeah, he's, yeah. he's done these vocal playthroughs, like one takes. Yeah. And he's just cool as a cucumber, man. Like, yeah, just he's, fucking just chilling. He seems like such a cool dude, too. Yeah. He seems like the most fun, yeah. chill guy, super down to earth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I reckon you end up getting lost in a conversation with that dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I saw a thing on YouTube where he's trying to guess if, um, in songs, if it was an animal noise, oh, or yeah, I've seen that one, yeah, yeah. and it's, he's just it's a funny guy, yeah, that's Seems it. Like just a happy go lucky dude, yeah, shit, yeah, and um, it's surprising that's it's a, such a shame as well with metal that it gets such a bad rap that people will think, Oh, these people are like angry, at the angry, world. and they're all like, um, <laughs> super negative. And it's like, yeah. Man, these people are a lot of them is the most fun, happy go lucky yeah. people, that's it, man, like, and um. Chat you see Corpse Grinder, kids. like, goes oh. and buys toys and shit. Yeah, and, man. I love that man. <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, such a big kid and he's super goofy. Yeah. And it's like, but if you saw him on stage, you'd be like, yeah. if you didn't weren't into metal, you'd be like, I bet you that guy's, like, the most yeah. angriest, um, yeah. like, arrogant prick. I bet he's an absolute asshole. Yeah. But then you see him and he's, like, so wholesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. For us, it's, like, on stage, he's like... This song's about shooting blood out of the end of your cock. <laughs> yeah. But then, like after that, he like go to the skill testers, win all the toys, and yeah. donate them to the kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's fucking yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, I can love him, Corpse Grinder. Yeah, right. there's, there's, there's so many, um, yeah, so many metal artists that that are just um, yeah. unfortunately get somehow tarnished. But then, if you you know, if you're outside of metal, yeah. a lot of people just like, no, oh, I bet you they're real. Yeah. Real bad people, and I was like, no, nah, yeah. a lot of them are really good people and do a lot of really good things for, yeah, for charities and the community. And like you know, even um, Trevor from Black Dahlia Murder, like oh. what he's discovering bands and all that. And that's yeah. so cool of him to be doing that and that's it, man. And putting him out there on forums and stuff. And he's started like got that man, rest in peace. Mm. But um, yeah, he definitely gave so many bands like the boost up. Yeah, you know, like um, Body Box is one of them. Like you know, it's like. And they came out saying as well, it's like they owe their whole career to the, mm. him because he, you know, put them out, sent them to like Maggot Stomp Records and they yeah. like got picked up from them. And now that band's got like a 27 show date with like Soulfly. Yeah, okay. And they're just playing Caveman wow. Slams. Yeah. You know, just singing That's... about in resin and just like dirty yeah. pot and shit. Yeah, it's... um. Are you used guys on a label speaking of labels or not? No. no. No, no like, honestly, like, um, like, I like the approach that Shadow of Intent have done. They're still independent. Okay. And, um, you know, it's like, yeah, labels are good for some some things, you mm. know, but 
it's not until you're at a certain level I feel like it's like needed. Yeah. You know, but um, I feel like doing it independent if like everyone in the band's like willing to chip in and help out in their own ways. Yeah. You can get to you know a decent level independent. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, that that's it's hard um, knowing where to go next. Like that's one thing we're at a bit of a crossroad we're at at the moment is where do we go next because um. You know, we've put out two two videos now, and then like some lyric videos and stuff, and um, and it's yeah, it's it's like it's almost like we're spinning our wheels. We somehow need to get to this yeah. next level, but we don't know how or what to do next. And and it's yeah. like playing in Perth, where um, we don't want to box ourselves into a corner of just being a Perth band that just keeps playing Perth. So then yeah. maybe we're thinking, oh, should we try to go over east next year and do a couple of shows over there just to branch yeah. out a bit and, and get some fresh ears to hear our stuff, you For know, sure. um, because in Perth, I don't know. Um, when, at the same time, I think a lot of it comes down to who you know. Like I, I notice a lot of local bands are mates with other bands and yeah. they'll play shows and then that's how they get in all these shows. And because us guys, um, we don't really get out to a whole lot of shows or because a couple of us, me and Sam, live in Mandra. It's a long way to go to check out a show. Got to commit, yeah. We do go to some, you know, obviously. Yeah. Like, um, you know, went to that Badlands one and all that that you've played and, you know, got, got a couple here and there. Yeah. Um, we can't go to every show, but if there's young guys that are in Perth bands that are going to shows every weekend and it's networking and yeah. you know, it does definitely works for them and that's probably... Mm. one of the key things we need to do a bit more of but it's just so hard when you're working full yeah. time and it's like the if there's anything besides like i'd rather like be looking at like for ourselves as well it's like a sort of like booking agent before mm. a fucking label you know it's yeah like, like um boys in remission mm. like i know they've got like they've signed up to some booking label i can't I remember who to be honest. Yeah, but stream something or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But like, I know that's doing them well. You know, yeah. like those boys just um, finished up their tour with Zeno. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, and um, I think Sedative they've just got a um, yeah. on another booking agent sort of thing. Mm, mm. You know, it's like I feel like that's a good way to go around um in you know, yeah spread in your wings. Yeah, because th- that's because there's not really any much info online. Um, because I guess every country is different and every city is different in in how to get out to people. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to it. <laughs> no. Um, so if, say, you were to Google online how to get my band more exposure, there's not any one thing that's going to do it. No. Nah. Yeah, sure, pouring money into some things might yeah. do it or Open whatever. Some but avenues, yeah. but um, it's just, yeah, found it's hard to, to um, break through, yeah. if you know what I mean. Definitely, um, yeah. Yeah, because another thing is um, found like a few people or a fair few people messaged me about our, our video f- for Futility and were like, man, that's fucking awesome. That was a really good yeah. song. But then that's as far as I went. No one like yeah. shared it or, or anything like yeah. that. And or, or and that goes a long way because Shit, yeah, people, if someone shares something, if you if say if you don't listen to a band and then you see someone share it, you're like more likely to check it out if it's someone you know because you're like, oh, yeah. oh, it must be good if they're sharing yeah. it. and. And, it, and it. yeah, and it's uh, it's like oh, it was that was a bit of a bummer that we didn't get a bit more exposure like that. Yeah. But, and you it know. goes a long way as well, like the algorithm, you know, like yeah. all that sort of business. It's like you got to feed that, you know, yeah. feed the algorithm so it can help you, you know. Yeah, and it's, when so, it's so much work though, shit. isn't it? Yeah, as much as in a way, you just want to write good music and yeah. and get it out there. And it's like fuck, trying to get into this algorithm and trying to play the game of social media. Yeah, but one thing I've got to say, it's like. Um, Perth band Patient Sixty Seven. Mm, yep, yep. Yeah, like um, those boys have, like cracked it, eh? Yeah, they have. Like yeah. you know that they've you know really worked that um, like social media side of things, and they're yeah. making a lot of noise for themselves in a positive uh, way. Definitely, yeah. You know, it's like I don't know. Like I guess it's like a big output that they put out on it. Yeah. But, um, you know, well done to them for fucking mm. finding that that way in. You know. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's um, it's just there's so many questions I have on it all, um, <laughs> and um, I got no answers for you, bro. No, 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 no. It's um, <laughs> and I'm sure, yeah, like I said, it's not a one size fits all. You yeah. might have done something that works for you, but might not wouldn't work yeah. for us, or yeah. 
best um, thing that I've like can say is like when you put something out is like find another promoter to help you boost it. You yeah, know, like Slam yeah. Worldwide was awesome. Yeah, you know? see, because I, I, I hit them up ages ago when we had a lyric video coming, and then he was like, "I'll send it through when it's ready, and then I'll try to book it in." And I was like, "We're not Slam." So yeah, but mm. they they do all sorts. But yeah, you know, there's other you know even like um, hardcore came, you know oh, yeah. like um, hit him up. He's fucking you know real good mm. as well. Like, you know he's got good good reach out. And, yeah, yeah, and he's fun to watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess uh, one thing with us is we're start to hone in on our sound now because we've had a bit of a eclectic sound for a bit. Like we had a bit of few kind of like black metal riffs on the on our EP yeah. and then um it was way different to the last song we released and yeah, that's, right. it's, yeah. it's definitely we've changed so much because I because <laughs> I write the majority of the stuff and I've got so many influences from stuff like um I love you know some old Dimmu Borg gear so I was like I want to yeah. chuck in some cool yeah. tremolo pick like evil sound and shit yeah. and then, and then um, I want some groove as well. Yeah, you know? and then I was like, oh, and then I was listening to Great Southern Trend Kill because I grew up listening to that. And then recently again, I listened to it again. I was like, oh fuck, I want to write some shit like this now. Yeah. And then it's got to the point where it doesn't have an identity. I've got too many things going on. Yeah. Um, and then now we've, I think now with some stuff we've written that's not out, but it's more in the vein of that futility thing. I think we're finding it. Yeah. Now we're starting to hone in on get that pocket. You know. Where yeah. You of, of, and I think that's one thing that's probably hurt us is that we didn't really have an identity for our music. It's like if you were to listen to our EP and then some of the newer stuff, it's like it's so wildly different in a yeah, lot of right. ways. Um, yeah, so we weren't really doing ourselves any favours there. But, you know, we didn't know and yeah. it's all a learning thing and um, and I'm still learning so much with songwriting and that. Yeah. Um, and then, But now I've, start, I've stumbled into doing synth stuff. Um, yeah, right. Because I love 80s synthwave stuff. I don't listen to it heaps, but I just love... I grew up watching heaps of movies when I was a kid from the 90s and, and, yeah. and, and the 80s, you know, like Van Damme and, yeah. and like Stallone stuff. And, yeah, man, I'm all for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I love dystopian cyberpunk-themed things. I just yeah, right. love that. I don't know why, I just love that. Just drawn to the it. neon lights and the, and the, and the rain-drenched stuff and the yeah. depressing dumpster-filled alleyways <laughs> that are fucking... Got these oppressive, massive skyscrapers above them. Yeah, I just love that theme and yeah, and that shit, yeah. and um and I was like, oh, I really want to capture that somehow yeah. with music a bit and um. Oh yeah, that's, that's trying cool, to do like, approach. Yeah, like. so that's what I'm trying to do and now. We've and that's kind of working for us, and we're all really enjoying it because stuff we've written before, like yeah, we're all kind of into it, but we're not. Sometimes we're not blown away by it. Yeah, you want to be all on on board with it all be like yeah man that's yeah sick. whereas now i notice when i'm sending demos to the boys on our group chat yeah it's like unanimously they're going this is this is cool yeah this right. is really fucking cool yeah i feel I'm, good yeah and then and then i'm feeding off that and then that helps me write more music because you kind of get a bit of a buzz out of it and you're like and you yeah. feel good and then you put lots of bit of a a fire under your ass like yes yeah and i'm onto something here that's now it. and then you get really creative and I'll show you some stuff after on what, what we're going yeah. towards. Sick, yeah, yeah. Um, that. It's probably yeah. It's nothing like anything you you play, but oh, I don't man. know how much you'll be into it. But now if I could bob my head to it, I'll be enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the main thing is groove, though. You know, I love groove in music. Yeah, always, always love the um, the old caveman. You know, just yeah. <laughs> yeah so you gotta have man. <laughs> gotta have that. Gotta have that groove, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. Definitely. I love me a bit of Devil Driver too. Yeah, like, yeah. They've been a big part of my life. For I never got time. hugely into them until, um, oh, I'm not hugely into them anyway, but I never really ever listened to them until recently. And then um, because I was talking to Neil Time and, and met oh. him and he used to be in Devil Driver yeah, yeah. before Carnifex. And then yeah. and um, I was like, oh, I might as well check out what he's been up to. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck, man, this band is fucking awesome. Yeah, what man. the fuck? Like, because Cold Chamber ruined it for me because uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard, you know, Cold Chamber back in the early 2000s and I was yeah. like, I wasn't into it. Yeah. And then so... You'd kind of expect Cold Chamber 2.0. Yeah, well, then I heard that, that Des Fafara or whatever his yeah. name is was... um. Then a Devil Driver and I was just like, ne- I just yeah. never checked them out. Yeah. And um, 
And so then recently I was like, fucking hell, man, this is really, really good music and yeah. it's fucking heavy. Yeah, and it's like they've got, like, they got groove, they've got melody. Yeah, whatever. man, they're so good. Yeah. And I was like, I've got to dig into this because I reckon I can just get so much inspiration yeah. from this. Like one of my favourite albums of all time is the, their album, Last of Kind Words. Yeah. It's got my favourite sounding snare yeah, on that okay. album. Just like that snare just sticks with me. I yeah. love it. Yeah, there's it's some fat, things it's about pop. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some things about um, some albums that will just stick out to you. Like yeah. one for me is um, I've always loved the drums off The More Things Change by Machine Head. Oh, yeah. They're, I've shown a few people like mates that I, I value their opinion in music. You know, you always got their mates yeah. that bounce stuff off. And, yeah. and one of my mates, he's always like, it's, I don't like it, man. It's, and, <laughs> and I'm like, Sounds hollow or something. Yeah, but to me, just when he does the kicks and the toms doing these fills, it's just so fucking fat, man. Yeah. I'm just like, every time I hear it, I get chills and I'm like, fuck, it's just yeah. sounds so fucking meaty, yeah. man. Just sonically Weighty. pleasing, you know. And then another one is the Great Southern Trend Guild. I've always loved the drums on yeah. that album. They're just um, especially on like Thirteen Steps to Nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, just you know, you know the drum. Just, yeah, the, yeah. The I, was like, I was just like, "Fuck, man, that's so fucking heavy." And yeah. the guitar tone that album just and vocally, I don't know if you've He's heard that stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm just you know like War Nerve that song. Yeah. I'm like. Um, that's to me is the epitome of of heavy vocals of, yeah, um, right. of for someone capturing anger because mm. you know how um, some people scream um, and it's doesn't sound like they're angry you yeah. know some bands and then yeah. some it sounds like they're angry yeah. him the epitome if someone was to, that wasn't into metal goes show me pissed an off. angry pissed yeah. off vocal I'd probably put on Warner or something yeah. um, and it's just like he just sounds. Yeah, he captured that. Yeah, like fuck, he yeah. and he wasn't trying to sound pissed off. It was like he was pissed off. You yeah. can tell. Yeah, you know it comes across as it's a genuine. Yeah, he was obviously in a dark place because <laughs> it's like fuck, he was pissed off there. Um, it's like you don't have to like like to be heavy. You know, it's like it doesn't have to be burp slurp vocals to be nah, heavy, man. Nah. Like a lot of the time, it's not. No, to be heavy, you know, it's just like it has to hit a, a tone that strikes with you to be like, ooh. Yeah, and, like, and someone know. that was good at that was that Greg from Dillinger. Oh, yeah. I always thought he's – I've never been into him really. They weren't my thing, but um, but one of my um, mates used to – he was he's fucking obsessed with him. Yeah. And uh, they were too erratic for me. But, yeah, I'll, I agree Yeah, for myself. Like, but yeah. But, um, but he's – he sounds pissed off. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's a wild sounding dude. Yeah, yeah, he's one of them guys that that is really good at capturing that um, yeah. vibe of it, of you know when you're listening to it, you like get chills. You're like, yeah, fuck, this guy's angry. That's it. Your start <laughs> lip starts to come out. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You get that get stank that face. Feel Anselmo lip happening. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, the ape lip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's um, it's yeah, it's a strange how. Just some vocalists have that knack for capturing that, mm. but something about um, you fan of Gojira? Yeah, yep. yeah, man. Like yep. I love his voice. It's yeah, like man. it's one in a million, but like yeah, it's it sounds it sounds like he's in pain a lot of the That's time. That's exactly right. Like stranded, that song stranded. Yeah, always. Yeah, found that and vacuity. Fuck, I love that song. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, like I'm. Um, can't think of like the song. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, like oh, just, that's one song I was always obsessed with. Is this song "Vacuity" of theirs and fucking something about that song? Just yeah, right. But, you know, stranded. You'd know. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah. I know. I know what you mean. And even in the the clean bit in that song, his cleans they sound like haunted a bit. He sounds yeah. like he's because of that. I think they wrote that album about their mum that died. Him and him his Mario brothers. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, their mum passed away, and a lot of the songs were about that. Yeah, right. And I think that's stranded one in that. particular. And when you hear the, the, you know, that interlude bit in the middle of the song that's yeah. got the cleans, yeah. that just sounds so sad. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they um, captured the, the emotion. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, I actually need to learn, like, um, you know, Flying Whales. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, um, that's such a cool fucking song. Yeah. It's like the, like, as from paradise like plays guitar and low so like he knows that song mm. and our drummer knows that song so it's like 
mid jams and just start belting that out. <laughs> yeah, and they start just like get carried away, just start to play like the whole song. It's like now I got to learn this song just to join in, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> like, try try my hand at those dull vocals. <laughs> yeah, they're, are they hard to do? I've never really been able to pull it off. Yeah, but like yeah, it's it's sort of like that um that pitched screaming sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like I've he also kind of yells a bit too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's like a. I don't know, it's just unique, man. Like, you can yeah. play a hundred different vocalists that want to be him, but you can hear him be like, that's the bro. That's right. Yeah. And that that's um one thing that sets them apart. And um, there's there's very few bands, I think, that um, have that uniqueness where there's someone in the band that's yeah not interchangeable like um, yeah. and, and, and also isn't re- replicatable. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's... So people um, like going back to Phil Anselmo, there's you can look up as many covers as you want on YouTube, yeah. and no one can no, sound like off. him. Yeah. Um, another one, in my opinion, is like say Rob Flynn. Yeah, he's that's... super unique. And as soon as you hear his vocals, you're like, "That's Rob Flynn." Yeah. Um, and so... then as soon as you hear a Metallica riff, you're like, "That's Hetfield playing." Yeah. Because he's he's, he's down picking. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and he's just his um, yeah, just the. Yeah. yeah, there's something about so their tone are, and their playing, and and um and then like with Gajira the drums, yeah, you, you, you can just know when it. Mario's playing because yeah. he's just got a kind of swing to his playing and yeah. the way he plays. And as they are the drum called um Lord Marco, no, oh, yeah, just got that many bloody bands he's in. But you could always pick him because he's yeah. like these like insanely tight like yeah. hyper speed beats he's producing. Like was he? Did he play for Dimu at one point or something? Uh He's in. He's been in a few extreme metal bands, hasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah he's another one. I've heard the name. Big, yeah, big, big old list. Yeah, but yeah, he does heaps of session stuff as well. It's yeah. like, and for like session drums, like he's super affordable. Yeah, it's like I think like um, uh, made a mind for a solo project, just um, got him to do some stuff, mm. and it's um, it was one hundred fifty Aussie dollars for him to wow. get him to record drums. What he sent him. Like scratch tracks of the guitar. Two hours later, he had a file sent back of him recorded drums. Yeah, yeah, and it's not they're not programmed. It's just yeah, yeah it's like him playing it. Doesn't fuck around. Well, that's yeah. probably someone that's just passionate. Uh, it's not a job for him. He just yeah, fuck cool. Yeah, someone that's wants it. to hear me play drums. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And it's like yeah, two hours. Like, Holy shit! Like yeah. that's you know, right up his alley, I guess. So he knew what what to do. But yeah, like. So that's yeah. Because there's cool. some people that charge exorbitant amounts for um, for um, session work or a feature or something. Yeah, you know, that I'm curious um, about the features, eh? Like, yeah, throwing around the idea of like who like to get as like a feature on for like a song here and there. Mm-hmm. So throwing around a couple names. Like I know that um, Lewis was talking about Elliot from um, what's the name? Beneath the Massacre. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's throwing that name around a bit. It's like. Um, yeah, so I don't know what he charges. Lewis has been talking with him. Yeah. I think they speak French or something like that. So he's been like having to like use the Google translator <laughs> and shit. That's, like, and that's not a great translator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. It's probably asking him for like, you know, <laughs> hey, would you like me to send some goats over or some shit yeah. instead of like vocals? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I like, um, uh, aborted um, the dude, um, Sven. He's been just on everything lately, man. He's been mm. like popping up doing features everywhere. It's popped up with another band as well, Coffin Feeder. Yeah, right. And it's like, oh, yeah, he'll be cool to get on as a feature, but, like, I wonder what he'll be charging. Yeah. Because if they don't have a home studio, you've got to book a studio over where they live. Yeah. And the time for that, you know. It's yeah, like, that's right. I think Ben Dewar from Shadow of Intent, he does his stuff at home. So yeah. it's like, maybe maybe he's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And more affordable. Yeah, so, definitely. You know? Well, a lot of people have home studios now, like all of us guys in... In uh, my band, we all record at home. Yeah. Um, I'll do all the guitars here. And Shane, yeah. he's got a booth at his house. He does all the vocals there. Yeah, nice. And then Sam goes there. But Sam's got a little bit of a setup at home too. Yeah. Right. For his backing vocals. And then um, Josh, bassist, sends me the DI stuff. And then. Oh, nice. And then. Um, Very self efficient band. Yeah, it is. And then our drums, they're all programmed. But um, because Callum just. Doesn't have the setup or the or the affordability to do drums, and they're always the yeah. expensive thing. Yeah, that's it. It's twenty twenty two, man. Come on, like we've programmed drums. Yeah, you know? yeah, but um, I'm super meticulous with them. So yeah. um, and then he comes over, 
and we go through every every fill, every uh, velocity for the snare, yeah. and everything. And and I'm um, I've probably got something wrong with me, but I'm one of the people that obsesses over stupid little details. So oh, they all shine though. That's yeah. The thing. And yeah. um, and I'll sit there, and then and even Sam's gone, and I'll isolate something. He's like, "Fucking, oh, I never knew the drum did that." Yeah. And I'm like. He's like, fuck it, oh, you actually really... <laughs> Getting deep And I in said, it. yeah, man, I don't fuck around with... If I'm going to do something, I'll do it properly and yeah, and I'll obsess it. over it. And then I'll be, like, in bed and I'll have an idea in my head and we're about to go to sleep and I'm like, hold on, I'm quickly running here and I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, right over Yeah, it's going to go that... Like, and yeah. instead of... Da, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes I've even been late for work because I'll get up in the morning, I'll be brushing my teeth and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll quickly just want to edit this thing on the drums quickly and then listen to it on the way to work and they'll quickly come in here yeah. and then by the time it exports and then I upload it to Dropbox I'm yeah. like fuck fuck I'm going to be late <laughs> and I just jump in the car and fucking yeah, off you go. and I'm like but I, I have to do it I have yeah. to because otherwise I'll be at work I won't be concentrating at work and I'll be yeah. fucking pissed off and making like, sure you don't forget it as well yeah. just like that's on your mind yeah, yeah. and so, yeah so I just obsess over things yeah. or I always write notes in my phone and also sometimes talk into the vocal thing and just go yeah on this riff, maybe I should try this. Or yeah. I'll even do the guitar yeah. line. Scat them in. Not that know. I'm going to show anyone yeah. ever. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but whatever it takes, you know. Yeah. Um, like, well, with the low, so it's how that started was like the idea of it was like um, I used to work with um, like a mate of mine, Nathan, Nathan Eaton. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, it's... Eaton. Yeah, Nathan. Yeah, from Mandra. Yeah, yeah, I think you know the bro. Yeah, I used to be in a band with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you knew the bro, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to push wheelbarrows together and oh, just yeah. like scat riffs. Oh, was that, did you work for the LD Total? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, man. Small wheel. Yeah. Nathan's a legend. I fucking love him, man. Yeah. Funny as fuck. And that goofy laugh of his. Oh, it's contagious, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hear it from the other side of the side. I could just hear it. I haven't seen him in a few years. Yeah. And. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Um, Sorry, this is a bit of a tangent, but um, in 2018, when Machine Head came over, I said to Nathan, I said, I'm going to go hang out with Rob Flynn. Do you want to come? And he goes, yeah, right. And then Eddie came and I was taking some videos and you could just hear his fucking laugh in the background. <laughs> and I was just like, fuck's yeah. Sake. Yeah. yeah, Love that, man. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a fucking funniest dude, man. Yeah, shreds on the gat, you know. He's, he's an awesome guitar player, man. Yeah. And, Awesome songwriter and that, and um, fuck, I wish I could, yeah, I wish, wish we could, wish we hung out more often, but yeah, yeah he's just a good dude, man. We'll, yeah, we, we were in another band, and that kind of band went a bit sour, and yeah, and we didn't talk for a bit. We speak now, though, I was messaging on Instagram and messenger every now and then, and um, yeah, and I miss him, yeah. He's, that's he's a dude that you would miss, you yeah, know, like, he's, yeah. He's a guy you can't stay angry at him, mate. Nah, <laughs> nah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, we used to like just like push barrows together and be like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and like my band at the time had just fallen apart, and like he, like um he was like I think it was just before Human Effigy just yeah. started, so it was like before that, so I think so he was didn't have a project going. Mm. And we're like, we should start a band, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, like we just sent through a, a, a couple of um just like little riffs, like from um Guitar Pro. Again, and that was like sort of like the extent of it. So sort of thing. I think he had some like I think he was looking at buying a house. So he had some yeah. things, some life yeah. things happening as well. I think so a kid on the way now. I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it's out. Oh, <laughs> oh really? I think yeah. Oh shit! I better message him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like yeah, the whole inception from like for the Alois was just from scat and riffs. Yeah, right, that, bro. Like, and, um, oh, so is he in the band or not? Nah, no. no, no. Like it was just like there with the inception man yeah yeah i think we might have had one band practice with him with yeah. like with a low with a low yeah, yeah that's it but that was like years ago when it was like do you think you'll bring there. him back on eventually or i've asked him man no nah, he's, he's doesn't have the yeah, time nah, he's got yeah. an apprenticeship now and that as well and, yeah, yeah that's it it's like we've got to finally got like a full lineup now but like yeah, we've had yeah. a few changes before we actually became a band if before you know what i mean kind of got locked in yeah that's it it's like man like to find a drummer to play of like, like 260 BPM fucking yeah. Euro blast beats, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we tried like, I want to say like seven or eight different drummers before we found well, Hex, who we got now. Fuck, how did you just, when we were looking for drummers, we struggled to find anyone, man. We, and then we got Callum and he was the only guy that come to rehearse with us. We had a few that just bailed on us and yeah, right. he come <laughs> and then luckily 
um, yeah, he's he came and he's fucking he could, awesome, yeah. man. And he's he can play. Yeah, he's good, good drummer, and uh, I love his style. And not only that, the most important thing is he's he's he just stays on on tempo so yeah. well, man. Locks that in, yeah. It's just fucking amazing. Listen, just I'm always like, man, fuck, he's just tight. Yeah, it's so good. It's yeah, playing with a tight drum is awesome. It's like mm. when we um, Pi was looking for a new drummer, like for the guy we got now. It's like, oh, it's like, oh. as soon as like um, Matt left and we needed a new guy, it's like, oh, I remember a guy like I he used to unload trucks with, you know, back in the day, and <laughs> I sent him a message and like on Facebook Messenger, and it's like last message like. 2013 or something yeah. so it's like message him out the book, hey man you still playing the drums I yeah like, yeah why is that i was like well i've got an op- a proposition for you you know yeah. but um yeah he's like crazy tight man like yeah. he's just like locked in like he's too hard on himself that man like yeah, yeah, yeah he's he's real good like yeah sticks to that beat like nothing you know yeah and best thing it's like doing folks i don't listen to guitar follow the drums yeah and it's like i use a lot of my cues from like accents and mm. shit like that and like every note that he plays it's it's the same it's like locked in he's like yeah. i'm doing that feel i'm doing that feel all the time yeah because if he does something else it might throw you off yeah that's <laughs> it yeah and it tends to be the case like for me it's like because yeah. i i just stick to the like, listening to the drums like, yeah of course, guitars are like in certain parts, but ninety percent of the time. No, just, I know what you mean, and yeah. well, that's with groove anyway. The vocals are usually gonna yeah. go with a because especially like um, aggressive vocals, it's like a percussion percussion instrument, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you because know, you get those like, yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. it's like you want to be locking in with that kick, you know, or whatever. Mm. So it's yeah, you're trying to keep with that. And it's it really helps like when you when they play. The, the same thing on time. You're yeah. Like, All right. Yeah. We, we can work with this. <laughs> yeah. This is good. Yeah, definitely. It was um with with the songwriting, um, do you write riffs as well? Do you sometimes pick up the guitar or the bass and go? Or do uh, you... for a low side, do for Paradise that like that's that's Trav and Lou's baby. It's like and they just send you a song and then go. And so I'll help with like this new one coming out now as well. Just like that. Lou's been working on. He sent us through a few things, and yeah. he's been like, "Where, where should I take it from here?" You know, and I'll yeah. be like, give him like a little idea, and like, might send him in like a a, a song with like a timestamp to be like, "Oh, like maybe in this sort of direction, come yeah. out of the riff," you know, instead yeah. of just like trying to make sense over like mumbo jumbo, like yeah, that's cool, yeah. You know? But um, th- those guys are the main like songwriters, yeah. Like, Trav and Lou. And so do they um do they say if the song's got a structure that's like, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, do they obviously do you just stick to the length they've put or sometimes do you go, oh, can we can we maybe extend that or Um, I kinda just <coughs> like uh Well it's usually pretty good. Yeah, I just um write to what I've been served at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. So I think um especially with Pi, with Lowe, so I'm a little bit more involved in the songwriting. Mm. Like I'll contribute a bit of a riff here, but you know, like Grant's a fucking riff machine. He's not mm. like a soloist, he's a, he's a riff man. Yeah. So I like, might give him a couple of like, little ideas here and next jams. He's like, I've got this idea from what you gave me. It's like, I can barely recognize it, but it's so sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, sick. You know, like, um, and as you're saying, for like chopping parts down here and there, it's like, yeah, right, maybe I just won't sing here and we'll chop it down a little bit so mm. it doesn't, you know, drag out. And, yeah. You know, have a little bit more, be a bit more involved in it there. Yeah. That's, um, the going back to the, we are talking about song length there, there's one thing we've tried to do a bit is, is shorten our songs because on our EP and that, some of the songs were, you know, around the five minutes and six minute mark. And, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Which heaps of bands I listen to have songs that long, but... Um, yeah. you get it it's hard it's, it's a bit of a balancing act eh, of yeah. having it that length and ha- keeping people's interest and this um, new song that we've just finished writing is about 5 minutes 30 and everyone's sweating <laughs> they're like oh it's again a bit long. <laughs> yeah but I'm confident that we can keep it interesting yeah. I don't know but that's the, yeah. that's the balance you know yeah so, so we just finished tracking <coughs> all 5 songs for Lowe's and it's like um each song's like yeah five minutes or like mm. 
four minutes 50 or so, you know? And um, yeah. I was chatting away with Ryan from Sedative and he's like, what the hell, man? It's like, he's like, we had a song that was like nearly three minutes and we're like, it's too long and they cut it <laughs> yeah. down to like a minute 40. They're yeah. like, yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got one song that um, we finished a little while ago and it's not released yet. It's um, a, it's under two minutes. I think it might come in just on two minutes and that's just weird for us, but it's this thrash song. Cause, um, it's kind of like Ditto Head from Slayer in <laughs> yeah. some parts of it. And... Um, and um, but it's nothing like our sound now. And I'm like, what do we do with this song? <laughs> and I was thinking we should just release it at some point. Yeah. It's just a fun thrash song. Yeah. And it's fun and it'll be fun live. But it's just not congruent with our current sound at all, man. Yeah. Um, right. So so I'll stick out. A bit I don't like think it'll go on, on a, any. I don't think it'll go on like an EP or an album. Mm. Um, but I don't want it to be unreleased because it's a cool song. Yeah. Um, right. It's like fuck. What do we do? <laughs> you get like you know, like. When an album comes out, there's always like one song I find on an album where it's like they're doing something different on it, you know, mm. like Lamb of God for um, the Sacrament album that had uh, Descendants or whatever. Mm. That was like complete different from the rest of the album and it's one of the best, you know, in my opinion, on the yeah. album. But oh, like, Maybe we could, yeah. yeah That's like, a good point. Dahlia's always got one or two different songs on every album, mm. like that Den of the Picturesque on the Ritual album, it's like, it's almost just like a hardcore song at the start, you know, like mm. with the skank beats and stuff. And then it gets into more of a heavier, grindy aspect yeah. towards the end. But it's like completely different to the rest of the album. But it's mm. like a very memorable song. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the only thing I'd be concerned about is because we've, every, all of our songs now have synth and, and most of it's going to have backing tracks live. Yeah. This song doesn't. It's just thrash. Just, <laughs> yeah. just, Bare bones thrash. Yeah, so it's right. like fast ass triplets and shit. <laughs> yeah, um, no, there's not, no, it's not a whole heap of triplets, but it's just really fast drumming and yeah, not right. 260 BPM, but just fast thrash. Yeah. You know, yeah, that shit. Yeah. And, and, um, Fuck yeah. and guitar solos, there's a couple of guitar solos on it, and um, I'll show you it after, but yeah, it just, it's not thematically, it's nothing like what we're, yeah. we're doing now, but. I don't know, maybe it'd be fun to throw out there for yeah. the three people to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> but, Man, um, it's like more local bands need to be like bringing out like the solo dude. Yeah. It's like, why not? Like, it doesn't have to be like a big ballady fucking 50 second long solo dude. No. Just, like, even if you're just going to rip it for 15 seconds, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, that's what this back. one, they're just short and sweet little ones. And then I've got longer ones in another song that's unreleased and... I don't know if we're going to release that song now. It's, I don't know. Because <laughs> things have just very quickly changed, very yeah. dramatic change. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. It's all up in the air. I kind of wish we had like a producer yeah. that could kind of... Be like, this is No, that's not, not what you need or yeah. like, this fits. Like, let's fuck with this. Because sometimes it's good to have someone out of the band that can go and mm. look. Because when you're in the band, you know, you're in the band. You can't yeah. really look at it. Um, like someone from the outside yeah. and it would be good to have someone to maybe pull the reins in and go yeah. no 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 yeah. outside this. the fishbowl yeah so I was actually speaking to Sean about this um, and um, and I showed him some stuff and I actually think he's a great songwriter so yeah. I'm probably send him things and just get his opinion because I value his opinion yeah and um, I don't even know him that well really He's um, good too, though. Like, yeah, like, I don't know him that well, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, but then when you come over here, we, I just thought, man, I really enjoy talking to you, and I and and um and I like your songwriting. I think you're good at it, and yeah, and um and we've got some similarities and stuff we do, and I think maybe he would be a good good critique, yeah, to things, you know, to, to run it by him and go, what do you think? Because I don't really have the only other guys is our um guy that mixes and masters our stuff. But he's busy, and I was yeah. like, I don't want to bug you with like, oh, here's here's another, here's another fucking idea, yeah, <laughs> idea that I changed the riff by point point three of a fucking or whatever. Yeah. You know? He's just like, I don't want to bore him with that shit. Yeah, he's got other more important stuff. Don't want to bother him being like, should I use this bend here or should I make yeah. it a slide? Like, yeah, that's right. I've sent him stuff, and he's pretty cool about it, but I don't want to um, take advantage of that either. Yeah, and, be, and, and just yeah. inundate don't him with shit because it's not his job, you know. And I'm sure he's got way more cooler shit to do than listen to my fucking <laughs> shit. You know? Yeah, I, I know the feel. Like. It's like, oh, I don't want to bother someone with this, but it's like, yeah. 
I want to show someone and get some feedback, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, how long, how long has this been? Oh, two hours. Yeah, right. Should probably wrap it up, I think, because yeah. it get a bit long. But <laughs> Easy, man. <laughs> but it's been, that's actually been a really good chat. We covered so many yeah, man. different things, eh? Like uh, video games to us. Christmas stuff. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and um, that's it. Yeah, is there anything else you want to put out there that, um, we didn't cover. Well, I feel like we covered most, to be yeah. honest. Like, but um, no nah, man, just thanks for having us on, man. And yeah, like, anytime, man. That's it. Uh, hopefully, play some more shows together. Yeah, definitely. I think that'd be that'd be great. Um, and I'd love to get one of your bandmates on here sometime, and one of the guitarists, like Travis or Lewis, and yeah, dude. pick their brains about songwriting and stuff. They seem like they're pretty, pretty um, proficient at their instruments. Yeah. And, Oh, they. I yeah. just love learning from people and knowing what makes them tick. And yeah. Oh, oh man. I can, they're all they're all friendly. They don't bite. You yeah, know, I, so. I message them every now and then on um, Instagram and that and Facebook and uh, seem like such good dudes. Yeah, man. So yeah, try try get them on sometime. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. I'm sure they'll be down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, thanks, man. All good, man. Thanks for having us. Cheers, and uh, yeah, take it easy. Thanks. <laughs>